It is Port Melbourne versus Williamstown. Two famous old clubs going head-to-head -head for the first time in the VFL women's competition. I'm Peter Holden. Thanks for joining us on WARFradio.com and via the VFLW video stream, which is currently on YouTube. Star-studded commentary team we've got today, so let's go around the panel and introduce everyone. First of all, of course, uh, she made her debut for us on Play by Play last week doing the Carlton and the Borough. Great to have back once again the very popular Julia Montesano. Popular? I've never been introduced as popular, but thank you, Pete. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. It's actually a bit of drizzle around, but the ground's looking in perfect condition, so I'm looking forward to see how this contest plays out. Also joining us today, of course, she is the rack and forward extraordinaire down at the Brunswick Renegades. In fact, just came straight from that game and signing autographs to coming down here to uh, participating as our match analyst at Northport Oval. It's great to have once again Sasha Doherty. Oh, g'day, Pete. G'day, everyone. It's been uh, really nice to be here today already just a bit humid a little bit of rain indeed and, and a great vibe i tell you what it was humid in elise colette's car who's given me a lift out from <laughs> tunnel to here to here there was no air con in the car oh Whoa. no so uh yeah that was a sweat Spice. box i think i lost five kilos <laughs> also great to have with us again as match analyst you may have heard him on last night's coverage between the western bulldogs and collingwood he is from the a3 podcast and the mongrel punt website Welcome back to Alex Doherty. G'day, Peter. Um, you, can't, you can't keep me away for too long. I've come back and i um, really excited to cover this game. It's uh, first time in, in the history these two sides have met in women's football. That is where I'll pause you. I actually got an interesting uh, text message last night. Someone pointed it out to me and they posted on the vflfooty.com uh, forum. This is not the first ever clash of women's football between oh, no. Port Melbourne and Williamstown. I've we got, discovered got bogus facts. from the Emerald Hill Recorder, an ad posted on the 9th of August, 1947, Whoa. promoting the next day, the 10th of August, the Port Melbourne women versus the Williamstown women at this very ground. That's old school. 74 years ago, including that was a precursor to the Flemington Jockeys versus Caulfield Jockeys match, and they advertised that day there was a dog as big as a racehorse and a racehorse as big as a dog. <laughs> now, that's some commentary you can't really buy. I need to write that down. Exactly. Let's start getting some tips quickly and uh, who will win by how much from our team. Let's start with Julia Montesano. Yeah, I think Port Melbourne's had a really good start to the season, so I'm tipping them by 20 points today. Let's go to Alex Doherty. Um, I like the look of Port Melbourne this season. They've uh, been scoring really well the first two weeks. I think they'll get the job done today. I am going to go with Port Melbourne by 45 points. I think it will be one-way traffic. Whoops. Sasha Doherty. Yeah, look, I hate to be on the bandwagon, but I, yeah, Port Melbourne are just in a better form already, and I'm going for those guys. No doubt, Wingstown supporters will give it to us if the result is the other way. We're just about ready to get underway here for our 2 p.m. bounce down at Northport Oval. Your lead commentator today on WARFradio.com and on the VFLW YouTube stream is Julia Montesano. Thanks, Pete. Siren's goal, the umpire holds the ball aloft. It's Port Melbourne versus Williamstown at Northport Oval. How good is this? Elizabeth McGrath in the ruck for Williamstown gets a tap out towards Williamson. Can't quite get a palm on the ball, so the players have to chase after it. Whelan goes in hard for the Seagulls. Now they've got a handball chain going through Chipotle. Chipotle will get it back to... Get 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 it to Manilkas, I should say. Bit of a tongue twister to start off the day, but we'll have a ball up. So, good start so far. The lights are on here at Port Melbourne. It's only 2 o'clock on a Saturday Arvo, but the lights are on. Normally, if you're at Moorabbin, the lights are on. That means the Saints disco is going. As we find ourselves at half four, trying to knock the ball out, trying to jump in there. In fact, for the Borough was Ashley, who was out last week, now back in the side. Ashley off the halfback, trying to give it a little hand pass away. Didn't go anywhere. Ball still stuck in the traffic jam at the Weemstown half forward flank. A little bit of dancing there. Me trying to get a hand pass over the top. Kais is there for support for Ashley to try and hand pass to. And the ball does go over the boundary line and out of bounds. 25 metres around from that left-hand point post. Let's get some early thoughts from Sasha. Doherty. Well, I just think it's going to be Port Melbourne dominating in their uh, forward 50 at this stage. I think it's not going to go much past the centre square. So McGrath and Tanner in the ruck. McGrath gets a tap out for the Seagulls, but it's going towards the boundary. Players will have to chase it up there. Gets tackled as she kicks it. But there's a mark down back there in the safe hands of Olivia Barden for the borough. So Barden will look to get the ball towards the borough's forward 50. Kicks it outwards. Doesn't quite find the target that she intended, but she's able to pick it up and go. That was McDonald who got that good spin. Instead, it gets to a Seagulls player. The ball's close to the boundary line. It'll fizzle over. No, it won't. It'll stay in play. So the Seagulls will look to get their forward 50 going, but the umpire has called a ball up. Just on the verge of the 50-metre line for the Seagulls. 
as we wait for the ball to be thrown back into play. Rucks are going to set themselves. It's going to be McGrath for Weemstown going in that versus Tanner. Ball fell short of both of them. Just swooping around to try and pick it up there was Monaghan. It's a Richmond AFLW listed player playing for Port Melbourne today. Goes along up the line. Ball went out. Now, was it touched before it went out? No, it wasn't. This means uh, the lasso rule and a free kick for last disposal out of bounds going the way of the Seagulls. City side of the ground here at North Port Oval. No score either side. Early stages, first quarter. Here's the long kick up the line. Little push and shove at the back. The umpire says, no, it was all fair. Mark paid. Might have been uh, McLaren back there. He switches it, trying to find Diet. Claire Diet with the football. Centre half back. Comes in board with a little zigzag. Works out okay. Finding Barton. Barton towards the half forward flank. Wanted it to open up for the borough. Maybe a chance here to get onto it. They do, and they kick it in towards the Kai's direction on the carpet. Can't pick it up. Tripodi was going with her. A jam of players there at the moment going for the football. Tripodi, I think might be DeSanto actually wearing the um, number eight and in, late in the side for Weemstown. Tries to kick it out of the defensive 50 with the long sleeves. Mel Nickus over around the football. Going to pick it up is Monaghan. Immediately put on the right boot. Nobody home. Taking it hands and knees there. Tripodi gives the hand pass off. Weemstown tried to hurry kick to get out of trouble. May not work out. Here comes Clear Diet on Mel Nickus. Mel Nickus is wrapped up. Drop the football. Play on called the umpire. Kai's coming after it. Kai's tried to punch the football along. Didn't work out. Fighting in hard there for the borough was Stanley. Tries to square it up and it works out okay. Pip Pesky. Great vision there from Emily Harley. Just all it, just the first thing you do when you're in that tight spot is you're looking bored and that's exactly what she did. And there was two port players there. Only the one seagull. Pip Pesky with the footy. Was one of their best on ground last week in the win over Carlton. She'll be having a shot on goal. Slight angle from about 40 metres out when she puts boot to ball. As we enter four minutes into this first term, Pesky has it got the distance, it fades, and it goes to the right minus score. One behind for Port Melbourne. Weemstown yet to score. Let's get some thoughts from Sasha Doherty. Look, I just had a random thought, and it's rare that you see one seagull by itself, to be honest. Normally there's a flock of them, and I think maybe <laughs> that should take good. that on board. <laughs> God, our special comments team has got some absolute <laughs> great puns this year. I'm looking forward to seeing what we've all got, guys. Keep it coming. Anyway, the ball's back in for Williamstown. They'll aim to get it back towards their end of the ground, but it's going to be held up inside the centre square. Umpire circling will call a ball up. So, yes, a pun contest here between the special comments folk here at WARF Radio. Thanks <laughs> oh for joining us on the, com the, on the coverage. On Fresh is absolutely on, guys. The ball's been thrown back up now. McGrath, once again, in the ruck with Williamstown. She'll be in there for most of the day, you'd expect. It looks like Williams is there, dropped on the floor, tried to get in the ball out, but it'll be balled up once again. So a contested start in the exact same spot as it was before. A little known fact is I entered the worst pun in the world competition. In fact, I sent in 10 <laughs> entries. Did okay. any of them win? No pun intended. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Oh, beautiful. Oh, he's got the sound effects going That's too. Well, we've got the sound effects anyway. With the, as play keeps going, we've got Williamstown going to stream forward now, but no one is home, so the borough will run onto it. Is it going to bounce all the way through? No, the last player on the line ended up getting it towards Dyer. But Dyer gets cut off by Williamstown here again. There's a chance here, but it goes on the boundary line and umpire will say that you drop the ball so good pressure there for the borough the the ball carrier for Williamstown was Scarlett Donnell so now Stanley's got the ball in her hands a good tackle by her to try and get the borough their second score of the day kicks it in the direction of Tanner but she can't get there it's a nice mark in the back there by Sasha Long for Williamstown good name so Long will she go Long no, she'll go with a short kick instead. That's my first time and last time I'll do that for the day, guys, I promise. <laughs> Williamstown, um, sorry, Port Melbourne now a rebound out of their defensive 50. But once again, it's been a kick to kick to start off with to the captain, Erin Mead, for the Seagulls. Mead will go long towards inside 50. There's a pack of boroughs there, but the mark was almost taken. Didn't quite work out in the end. Bidenweg Webster will try to get towards goal. Can't quite do so. The borough now under pressure to get it out of the defensive 50. A quick handball chain sees them safe. And Monaghan will go long towards the direction of Beth Wilson. Beth Wilson's got a couple to contend with. She paddles the ball forward. Keeps on paddling towards the... Keeps on paddling towards the inside 50. The Seagulls are there and it's Erin Mead on hands and knees who manages to get the ball out to McGrath. McGrath goes long. It's almost straight down the throat of the borough defender there, but she can't quite get the full mark completed. So the ball's still trickling in the centre square. We're closer to Williamstown's forward line. 
And the umpire will circle, circle and ball up just inside the centre square. And we'll get some thoughts from Shasha Jolity. Yeah, look, the last line of defence for Port Melbourne at the moment saving the day for the team. They just seem to be putting themselves on the line. Um, yeah, Williamstown just cannot get a score. Ruck work being done there by McGrath for Williamstown. Brought the ball to ground. One to try and get involved is Williamson. And the umpire says it's going nowhere. We'll call for another ball up. If you've just joined us here on WARF Radio and the VFLW video stream, seven minutes gone first term. Port Melbourne one behind. Williamstown yet to score in this clash of old rivals. Ball on the deck. Trady winning. The umpire said there's a bit of a push in the back and you may have a free kick. And going back to have that free kick from about 60, 65 metres out from goal. Wearing the seven is Megan Williamson. Williamson on the left boot. Tries to drive it towards the hot spot. 40 metres out for goal to try and acknowledge the lead. Knocked away from her. Pesky tries to do the pressure work to lay the tackle. Going in there and doing some great work as Williamson harassed the ball getter. Mead wanted to have a crack in there for Williamstown as well. Solomon is there on the outside. Wilson has a go for Port Melbourne. Wilson, it may just bounce in her favour and indeed it does. The netballer from the Hawks and the VNL put it on the right boot out towards the flank. Trying to run onto it as Cleo Saxon Jones went back to Wilson. Wilson gets hugged by Solomon. Put her under pressure but still found a teammate. There's another hand pass across to Petsky. Pip Petsky now draws the player. Goes to Stanley. He's got to tell the, do the old uh, dance around and sell the candy. Gets on the right boot. Goes inside 50. No one home. Easy mark here for the Seagulls and they're going to run it out of defence. Yes, you're right, Pete. They're going to kick it towards the wing now and a player that's just come on in, Zoe Garth, takes the mark. She assesses her options across the forward line. Wants to go long, does go down the line. There's an even two-on-two -two matchup. But Tripodi will run onto it with some real speed there, oh. but she's wrapped up in a huge tackle there by Lisa Davey for the Borough. And the umpire will say, absolutely, you can get a free kick for that. A bruising tackle there from Lisa Davey. But it looks like Bromage will get the free kick. That traditional helmet and braids, as she always does on game day. Goes towards the forward line. Mel Nikus is there. Harley's right there with her. Lays a strong tackle. Doesn't get paid for it. Kai's goes forward. There's no, there's a one-on-one -on -one match up there. Can't quite get it towards her intended target. So Williamstown will have the chance to go forward again. They go direct down the corridor. It's not going to work out. Peshki's there for the borough. Running onto it. She can get a quick kick out. There's an even one-on-one -on -one match up in the forward line. The borough tap it towards the goal square. It's pressure there for the Seagulls back at the defensive 50. Who can get onto it? Erin Mead's right there. She's putting her hand up. Wanting a free kick but can't get it. So a good last line of defence there. Effort by Erin Mead, the skipper of the Seagulls. And we'll have a ball up just outside Port Melbourne's goal square. So they'll get the tap out. Quick snap. Oh, it's yes. good. Sarah McNamara, take a bow. You've kicked your first goal for the Borough. It's 1-1-7. One, one, Williamstown yet to score. And Sarah McNamara was looking lively in that last play and did end up getting the snap, Sasha Doherty. Yeah, outside of the boot as well. It was a very tricky angle to, to get that in, but, yeah, it very, made it look very easy. Sarah McNamara, of course, uh, played in the first game against North Melbourne, kicked a goal in that match, was rested last week, and now back for this week, has the Burroughs first. Let's get some thoughts on the member of the A3 podcast and Alex Doherty. I really liked Pip Peshke's game early, and that, that last inside 50 entry was very quick and very direct, and I think that's how Port Melbourne are going to score a lot of their goals today. I think it's just got to be very quick and very sudden entries. Light yeah. rain teaming down here at Northport Oval. 1-1-7 one, one, the Borough. Williamstown yet to score. Halfway mark of this first term. And Brummer straight out of the guts. Put it on the right boot. Pumped it in long inside. 50 for Emily Harley. Classic football, Sasha Doherty. Absolutely. Beautiful mark, composure. She's got a great kick, so I wouldn't put it past her putting it through the sticks. Got the front position as well, as well, M Harley. And uh, very good use of the body. Richmond AFLW listed player Emily Harley will be kicking from 37 and a half metres out. Slight angle. Going towards the Baldy Bridge and is away to the right. And will register as a minor score. one 2 eight, Port Melbourne. Weemstown yet to score here on WARFradio.com and via the VFLW YouTube stream. So Harley there after kicking two goals last week as her first shot for the day didn't quite get through. So now Williamstown will have a chance to rebound. They go towards the outer side, but it's going to go straight down the throat of the borough. They'll get a chance to come back inside 50. It was in the hands of Claire Diet there, the former Hawk. So 
Dye will aim to kick it long inside 50 towards the goal square. There's a couple of players down there. Who's at the ground? Williamstown is. So Williamstown will get a chance to rebound, but it's straight into the hands of Pip Peschke, who, Alex, you mentioned you've liked the work early of. Good positioning as well in that, in that defensive stoppage. So Peschke won't, take, won't rush or will rush. Get a kick down into the forward 50. Sophie Locke, who kicked three last week, was there. Couldn't quite get her hands onto it. McNamara, the goal scorer, did. Bromage, a great mark running back with the flight. And Courtney Bromage will have a chance to get her first goal of the day. She's about 40 metres out, pretty much directly in front. She might try and give it off here. She's getting a quick run up. She gets a good boot onto it. It's going towards the goal square. Can they get a mark? The goal square is free. Erin Mee was the other one back for the Seagulls. The Black of Borough players there we could have ended up in a score, but instead it'll go to the boundary line. We'll have a throw in deep inside the forward 50 there for the Borough. Ideal conditions today for Courtney Brumage. A little bit of rain, humid, very Queensland weather. Yes. As we wait for the ball to be thrown back into play. 12 and a half minutes gone first term. Borough lead by eight points. Ball missed everyone in the ruck contest and it's all wrapped up as snug as a bug in a rug. And the umpire wants for a ball up. Let's get some thoughts from Alex Doherty. Yeah, it seems like Port Melbourne have really dominated the last five to ten minutes. They've Their pressure inside 50 is sort of... It's restricting Williamstown's ball movement a lot. And I thought that the Seagulls had the uh, the upper hand early, in, especially in the clearances in those first five minutes. So it's good to see the Borough actually uh, getting control back. And we call for another ball up. Bromage, who we spoke of, went in and under, couldn't get it out. Petsky put it on the left boot and almost, well, I was going to say brought down rain. It is raining. And finds Sophie Lockett. Just got knocked out of her hands by Snelatsky, who came through. Bromage comes in to lay another tackle. That's great pressure work. On the outside here is Claire Dyer. If they can get it to her, was kicked along the ground. Willem was there. And the umpire says it's over and out. We'll call for a ball in 25 metres around from that left-hand point post for the Borough. Some thoughts from Sasha Doherty. Yeah, look, I think both teams' intensity is actually quite equal at the moment. Um, even though it is staying in the borough's end, it's not... Um, Williamstown is still actually doing really well to keep it out of the goals. So Saxon Jones was in the ruck there for the Borough. She's a Richmond AFLW listed player in for her first game for the Borough. But it goes to Williamstown now. It will be a tackle. It won't be holding the ball quite yet. Luke Lazowski Hay was the one that laid that tackle. It was a great work, great play by her. So Williamstown will aim to advance it forward. They're towards the centre square now. It'll trickle towards the boundary line. Chipotle's running after it. Can't quite get a boot to it. A little airy fairy, and the ball looks like it will be wrapped up right on the boundary line on the outer side of the ground, uh, just outside the centre square. So Williamstown tried as, tried as hard as they can to get the ball forward, but the Borough have it locked in their forward 50 for the most of this first quarter. We'll have it balled up once again. It's still tight on that boundary line. Williamstown now can link up and get out get out of trouble, but instead it's a kick out on the full, so the Borough will have a chance to now rebound for their second goal of the day, perhaps. Chloe Layton was the intended target. Ball bounced over the fence, and now the Borough pick up the spare ball that was inside the fence and will restart play. Knight goes short, looking for Bromage, who was... Caught behind on that attended pass. Oh, getting dumped. It was Tripodi. But she managed to get rid of the football. Teamed up there with Leighton. Who gave it away to a teammate who got brought down when she tried to get her kick away on the wing on the city side of the ground. Still in heavy traffic. Hurry kick out from the Borough. Going back in the direction of Claire Diet at centre half back. Who gave it all quickly to Stanley off the side of her boot. Went back to Diet. Diet tried to get a hand pass over the top. Was trying to find McNamara. Was intercepted. And taking away here for Williamstown to get the kick around the corner was Donnell. But it was picked off. No 15. May. Oh, it was, it was 15. 15. They say 15 and a 50 metre penalty. There's Sultan to the wounds. Very short 15, in my opinion. Oh, that, but, that's that's double there. But what do I know? <laughs> a lot more. As going to is Barton. <laughs> Barton inside 50. Too much juice on the kick, though. Went over the head there of Holly Bailey. Waiting out the back was Cleo Saxon Jones, who was wrapped up, put into the ground. And the umpire says, You are holding the football. And that is a free kick going the way of the Seagulls. Borough lead by eight points, first-term football. So Sasha Log, a short kick out after laying that tackle, goes in the direction of Williamson, and she gets wrapped up immediately in a tackle, and it will be another free kick. Umpires holding the, holding the ball, and so are the players. A lot of hot, fierce tackling. So the ball's back in the hands of the Borough. They'll go back inside 50. The intended target gets it in Mel Kais, flying back with the footy. She was just on the bench a minute ago, fresh legs, and she'll try and have a set shot from about 45 metres out on a slight angle, the skipper. Yeah, um, you mentioned Cleo Saxon-Jones just before. Uh, we've actually had her on the A3 podcast. Really delight to talk to. Uh, 
also has had shameless plug. I love it. <laughs> also has had um, a, a really shocking history with uh, injury as well. So it's finally good to see her out and hopefully gets a bit of continuity in her game. And Alex, just as you were talking, Kai's went short. So a clever play by her. Holly Bailey was all on her own, and Holly Bailey was named best on ground last week in Port Melbourne's 44-point win over the Blues, and she'll have her first set shot of the day. She's about 35 metres out and a pretty tricky angle. So we'll see how she goes with this run in. Holly Bailey. A nice approach off the boot. There's a heaps of players on the goal line so that we'll get rushed through for a rush behind. And that takes Port Melbourne to 1-3-9. Williamstown is still yet to score where the rain is teaming down as we speak and we're just about towards the end of the first quarter. Oh, rush the football back into play with a long kick by Erin Mead, the captain of the Seagulls. Working towards the direction of Leighton. Tries to go in and lay a very good tackle. Ball was squeezed out close towards the boundary line. Tripodi chasing after it. Managed to keep it in with the support of uh, Leighton. And the umpire says now it has gone over and out. And we'll call for a ball in. And we'll get some thoughts from Sasha Doherty. Yeah, just... Um Quickly upgrade the Williamstown. Their decisions are panicked. They need to back themselves and move the ball down and take their time. They just keep rushing through and it's not playing in their favour at all. Ball thrown back into play. Tanner does the ruck work, knocks it to ground, wanted to have a second crack at it. Now the hurry kick around the corner, dribbles in the forward line for Sophie Locke. Sophie Locke sold the candy. Sophie Locke on the right. Oh, <laughs> goal for the Barra. And they go out to 2 3 15. Williamstown yet to score. WARFradio.com and on the VFLW YouTube stream. Some thoughts with the man behind the A3 podcast, Alex Doherty. Well, that was a terrific play there from Sophie Locke. It's been one player that I've been really keen to have a look at uh, the, uh, today. Four goals already from the uh, from her first two games, and now it's number five. Um, they, they're, really, they're really getting on top now in the clearances, uh, Port Melbourne. They're really, they're, they're really starting to get a grip on that that inside 50 entry and you said it before Sasha they've uh, they've really forced Williamstown to just hack the kicks out of defensive 50 and it's playing to their strengths yeah absolutely they just don't don't seem to be uh, losing anything on the field at the moment and even with the rain which normally is slippery conditions I've got to admit both teams are really handling the ball very well at the moment so I think we've got a warning there for the umpire I heard a whistle blow if it's the too many of the 565 rules so there's a warning there for the borough who had too many players but it doesn't matter they'll get the clearance out of the middle and they'll get it out to Claire Dyer, who's got a bit of space to run. She does. Gets it inside. There's a couple of Borough players there. Who's at the back? Who can run onto it? Cleo Saxon-Jones was there at the ground. She can't quite bend over and pick it up. Monaghan's there as well. From the boundary, kicks it towards goal. There's a two-on-one there. Could it get to McNamara oh, no in the way. goal square? She can't. They nearly bounced through for a goal. Instead, McNamara will try and keep it in. Mal Kais is there looking for an extra handball option, but can't quite get towards it. The Seagulls now have a chance to mop up. It'll be a hack kick straight outside 50, but it's straight into the throat of Hannah McLaren. Of course, the daughter of former umpire Scott McLaren. She looks for an option inside 50. Goes towards the goal square. It's a nice centering ball. There's a couple of poor Melbourne players there. They can't quite get into their hands. Sophie Locke for a second in a minute gets brought down to tackle by Suleiman. Now Claire Dyatt's running after her along with Tripodi. Tripodi the pocket rocket for Williamstown. Grabs Claire Dyatt up in a tackle and it will trickle over the boundary line. We're inside the Burroughs forward 50, about 25 metres out, and we're due for a boundary throw in. Light rain still teaming down here at Northport Oval. The lights are on. And it is a autumn afternoon, but it feels like summer with very humid conditions. Very sticky as the kick by Saxon Jones was before the siren was punched away by Mead in the goal square. So it will not register. And that means at quarter time, Port Melbourne, 2 3 15 lead. Their historic arch rivals, Williamstown, no score. We say historic in the men's context. This is the first time in VFLW level that we are having women's football between these two sides. Let's get some thoughts on that first quarter. Let's first of all go to the uh, host of a podcast that is yet to be created but will be created soon, the one and only Sasha Doherty. Oh, yes, that is a very good r- reminder Teaser. there, Pete. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, my thoughts at the moment are, look, both teams have... Uh, stepped the intensity up. That first 10 minutes seemed like a little bit slow, a little bit unsure, and now they're both settling in. But, yeah, Borough is just all over it at this stage. Uh, Williamstown doing their best to try and get it down their end. But, um, again, Borough building a wall, which I noticed they did back in the first round when they were playing down at North Melbourne. Um, seems to be a really solid defence for them in the forward area as well. So looking good at the moment, Alex. Yeah, absolutely. I think 
you got to got to give credit to Williamstown. I thought they actually brought the pressure really, really well in that first five to ten minutes. And then Port Melbourne, once they got adjusted, they played to the, and they started playing to their strengths. They did set up that wall and their forward pressure, especially. I think they laid five tackles inside fifty in that first quarter. So. It, it's, it stems back to that forward pressure and it's really causing those Williamstown players to panic. It is, and I mean, I've just circled a couple of names. Um, Emily Harley, um, Pip Peschke and uh, Courtney Bramage at the moment are really standouts for me on that side of the really, uh, bench. Really like Bramage's game early. I think she, she's she got a lot of something about her. And yeah, just crossing over to the Seagulls, Sasha Long, not just because her name's Sasha, but she's actually doing pretty well at the moment. <laughs> um, and Talia Wright as well, number 37. Let's find out the goal kickers at quarter time with Julia Montesano. Yeah, so only goals for Port Melbourne, and it was Sarah McNamara who got the first on the board and Sophie Locke the second of the day. So McNamara, or you mentioned Pete, also got a goal in her first game for Port Melbourne, which is also a part of the Making the Call program that Sasha and I did as well. So a couple of shout-outs there. And Sophie Locke uh, got three goals last week, absolutely had a field day against the Blues, and the former Murray Bush Raider is looking the goods again today. So... Good going at the start for, for the borough and well suited, well analysed by you two back there, Sasha and Alex. Absolutely. Uh, and, of course, if you're on social media, look out for hashtag draft Deb, Sarah McNamara's yes, little character. Yes, behind the account. We love that. <laughs> we'll take this opportunity to take a break. At quarter time, Port Melbourne, 2-3-15, Weemstown, no score. Been playing for a while, sweet kicks. Because footy makes you smile. Sweet kicks football If you're getting ready for the trials Gotta go the extra mile Sweet kicks football Not always hearing that sweet sound when you kick the ball? Need to develop your footwork or explosive speed? Want to take the next step in your footy career? Then you need Sweet Kicks. More info on our Facebook page or go to our website, sweetkicksfootballacademy.com.au. Gotta go the extra mile. Sweet Kicks Football. Oh, hi, I'm Maria from Sesame Street. And Elmer's Elmer. And we're here to talk about driveways. Driveways can be dangerous for children. Or little red monsters. So it's important for parents to always watch their children around them. Yeah, driveways are for cars, not for play. That's right, Elmo. Play only in safe places away from driveways because people in cars may not see you. Uh, Elmo sees you, Maria. Tag, you're in. Oh, here I come, Elmo. <laughs> Remember, driveways are like roads. Always supervise, separate, and see. Learn more at kidsafevic.com.au. Hello, I'm Bryony Dawson. Expressions of interest are now being taken for the second round of the 2020-21 Change Our Game Making the Call program. The course is designed to provide aspiring women sports broadcasters with the skills and mentoring to pave their own way into broadcast media. I was one of the lucky 21 women who took part in the first round of the pilot program. The program included the opportunity to hear from well-established media identities, including Kelly Underwood, Andy Ma, Melanie Jones, and my personal favourite, Daisy Pearce. For more information about the program, visit the Change Our Game website. How often should you wash your hands? Maybe around nine times a day. Four? Like 20. Maybe twice a day. Whenever they feel dirty. When should you wash your hands? After you touch some raw meat. And before starting to eat. At the beginning, I wash my hands before preparing food. How would you rate your knowledge of food safety? Probably like an eight out of ten. Six or seven. Seven point five. Learn more at foodsafety.asn.au slash food safety training. Food safety, it's in your hands. It's the VFL Women's Match of the Day. On the VFL Women's Match of the Day on WARFradio.com, your home of VFL Women's Football and a range of podcasts. And, of course, on the YouTube stream by the VFLW, this is our match of the day, where Port Melbourne 2 3 15 lead Weemstown. No score. Just quickly, some around-the-ground scores in the VFLW. No scores yet from Casey Demons and North Melbourne because they have not invented electricity yet out there. Casey Fields, <laughs> um, down at Deakin University. That game is live on GoFooty.live. That's GoFooty.live. Uh, that game, Geelong and the Southern Saints. Geelong 1-3-9 lead the Saints one behind. And at uh, Icon Park, Carlton, 2-3-15, lead Darabin, no score, which is very similar to the result that we have here at the moment. Port Melbourne, 2-3-15, Weemstown, 
no score. We're just about in readiness for the second quarter as the light rain continues to tumble. The smell from the barbecue comes wafting through here at North Port Oval with the sausages. That's good. The beer booth is doing good sales, so it's like a typical Port Melbourne Weemstown game. Oh. And to get us underway for the second term, here's Julia Montesano. Yeah, so the umpire holds the ball a lot for the second term. The rain is still plummeting down. It looks like it'll stay that way for most of the game. And we'll have a free kick early on. It's a holding free kick, and it'll go the way of the borough. So it's back in the hands of Abby Tanner. No, it's not. She has to hand it over to Phoebe Monaghan. So she's in for her first game for the borough this year. Richmond AFLW listed player. Also played for the Giants earlier on in the comp as well. She'll kick it down towards forward 50. There's a couple of flying borough players going up, but none of them can quite get their hands to the footy. Pipeski's down there on ground level. She gets held without it. Doesn't quite get doesn't quite get the call she intended. Sophie Locke's chasing after it. So is Zoski Hay. It'll go towards the boundary line. And in for a throw-in. So... An early forward 50 entry for the borough. They look like they'll continue to keep doing what they're doing. As we wait for the ball to be thrown back into play, normally uh, on a dry day, that's where the most passionate Port Melbourne supporters stand on that uh, half-forward flank as the ball is thrown back in. Tanner brought it to ground, beating out McGrath. And then Mackay's jumps in to lay a tackle. Umpire will call for a ball up. In fact, uh, the rumour has it one AFL player who got dropped to the VFL one year said the loneliest place in the world is North Port Oval at that half forward flank near the beer booth. He says, if you're having a bad day, the Port Melbourne supporters will kindly remind you. Run and hide. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> As the hurry kick around the corner, trying to fly through the air there as McDonald couldn't hang on to it. Trying to get a hurry kick is Usley in there. It scrambles inside the forward 50. Trying to get on top of it is Williamson. Got knocked over there. Trying to fight her way through Strap. It can't get it out. Watching on there is Trapodi umpire says, I need the football back, please. And we'll call for a ball up. And we'll get some thoughts from match analyst Alex Doherty. Well, it looks like Port Melbourne, are very, uh, uh, the early signs are Port Melbourne have picked up where they uh, left off in that in that first quarter. They're, they're in control of the clearances. I feel like the more they get into this game, the more they're going to really run away with this. So the ball trickles out of bounds once again. And we'll have another throw in deep in the Burroughs 50. You're right, Alex. I look like they're going to keep steamrolling their way through the Seagulls. But let's see what the Seagulls can do with this throw in here. We're about 30 metres out in the Burroughs forward 50 line. So the umpire will throw the ball in. As usual, they do have to come in 10 metres to get the ball moving through the corridor. The umpire's picked out a free kick, though, and it's going to go the way of the Burroughs. So we'll have a set shot here early in the second term. We're just deciding who it's going to go to, and it will be Cleo Saxon-Jones. Alex, you mentioned earlier you had her on her podcast, and she has had a wretched run with injuries, but good to see her out of the park today for the Burroughs. She's got the ball about 45 metres out on just a sort of a slight angle, but pretty much straight in front, I'd say. So she goes for a quick run in now. Gets over the player on the mark. Gets oh, some good in. distance on it. It's a beautifully straight kick. And Cleo Saxon-Jones take a bow. That is a beautiful kick to get the scoring underway in the second quarter for the Borough. So Cleo Saxon-Jones gets her first of the day. The Borough get their third of the day. It takes them to 3-3-21. Williams Town are yet to score. We've played just over... Just under, sorry, three minutes in the second term. What do you think of that, Sasha Doherty? Yeah, beautiful technique and just backed herself, you know. Didn't let anything bother her by the looks and just sailed straight over the players. Beautiful kick. Of course, Sasha Doherty was part of the Making the Call program uh, last year in November and applications for that are still open until uh, this Friday. So if you're a woman interested in sports broadcasting, go to changeourgame.vic.gov.au and look out for Making the Call. As we reset play in the middle of the ground, Tripodi jumps on in, umpire says it's going nowhere and will call for a ball up as it's being watched on by Amy Whelan. Umpire will take the footy back and throw it up right in the centre of the ground where we began Tanner does the ruck work here for Port Melbourne. Waiting for it as Lasoski Hay wouldn't come out to her. Usley in there. Got knocked out of her hands. Had to go back in for another crack at it. Had support. Weaving around. Oh, there might be Wilson just going across and finding McDonald who had it and then slipped through her hands. McDonald is being held by one arm by Strafford. Ball oh, cried the crowd. Just when she got boot to ball, it was too late because the umpire had the whistle in the mouth and says, that is way too long. That is a free kick. And Strafford goes immediately across to Williamson. Williamson got a dance left, France right, gave the donut. Argue, got on the left boot, sizes it up, almost a mark. It's punched away at the last moment by Tanner. Barrett come out of defence with a kick, looking in the direction of McDonald, nearly got tripped up. Going through there is Strafford, got it away before she was mown down. In front was Tanner, umpire with a late whistle, a very late whistle, saying in the back, and that's a free kick going the way of Williamstown downfield. So Strafford got it in the back. Now the question is, does it go to the player on the spot? Yes, it does. 
And that means a free kick going the way of number 10, Elizabeth McGrath. Some thoughts from Alex Doherty. Well, William Sound, that was, that was pretty good ball movement there. They sort of try to go in quick and they should be rewarded with a scoring opportunity here. It just depends on the distance from number 10. That's uh, Elizabeth McGrath. Puts it on the right boot. It is going to fall short at the top of the goal square. Came off hands. Trying to have a crack in there is Usley for the Borough. Can't get it out. Waiting on the outside is Williamson. The ball won't pop out to her. Everyone's jumping in there. It's like a big old game of Twister. Hurry kick away on the left boot by Dyack. Goes towards the halfback flank out of side. Tripodi chasing after it. Had support. Here's the hurry kick inside 50. One-headed grab. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Merits. Just put the big mid out like she was in the gully and said, that's mine. And off to the pavilion you can go. And yep. Beautiful. Wonder if she's got some grip roll on or a magnet stuck in the ball <laughs> or her hand. But no, that was a um, superb mark and I really hope it pays off for her. They're getting some centering kick by Whelan as well. Sorry to interrupt you, Alex. Oh, but right. yeah, it was a really good centering kick it was. as well. Yeah. They're, get, they're getting some repeated inside, inside 50 entries now at Williamstown. So with any luck, we should be getting a, a score on the board anytime soon. Talia Merritt will be kicking from 40 metres out with a wet footy. Towards the Fred Cook end of the ground, and it is away to the right hand side. And will register as Williamstown's first ever score against Port Melbourne at VFLW level. Williamstown one behind Port Melbourne, 3 3 21, second term football. Here's Julia Montesano. Port Melbourne now will have an opportunity to get the kick out. Davey with the responsibilities this time round. There's a couple of seagulls running after it. There's one borough player. She gets absolutely mowed down by Tripodi, and absolutely that is a free kick in the direction of Belinda Oosley with the headband on today and the socks right up. Belinda Oosley kicks it out wide. Peshke's there, so is Harley. Harley gets a contested mark and runs onto it straight away. Saxon Jones gets a good mark, so it's a good passage to play here for the borough. Saxon Jones, because she go for a second of the day? She has a ping from the boundary line. Oh, no way! Through. Just still bouncing, trickling, 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 and it will go through the behind oh. post. Oh, I tell you what. the crowd, that one. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. A lot of anticipation there. That, it that just was, ended up that, being a minus score. 3 4 22. Williamstown have got one, score, one point on the board. That was looking good in flight. Absolutely, it was. So the Seagulls will kick it out once again after that little momentum scare for them. Now the Borough can get it back in and try and get another goal on the board. It trickles towards the boundary line. Williamson's able to try and get a quick kick out. She's pushed it, pushes, she kicks it, so the ball doesn't get to go in any direction. And the umpire will come in and ball it up. Rain still teeming down here at Port, North Port Oval. And it is looking like a bit of a lonely place, as you mentioned, Pete. But the Borough supporters will try and make as much noise as possible. As the ball is still on the wing on the outer side of the ground, that's uh, Phoebe Monaghan. You can see with the touch down the left arm, lost control of the football. Going in there is Kate Adams fighting hard for the borough. Ball squeezed down, Sasha Long going after it, but picking up the football is Courtney Bramage. Went left, went right. Skew kick off the side of the boot, looking for Monaghan. Monaghan dropped it, had to go back in again. Umpire said, copped it over the shoulder. We'll have a free kick, and they play on advantage towards the centre half forward position. Excellent ball from behind. Again, pitch Peschke, who fell to ground hard. This this is a two-on-one scenario, and the wet ball won't quite sit well here for Costello, but she did pretty well in the end. Got it across to Leighton, who's chasing after the football. Circling, circling, circling it with Monaghan on her hammer. In goes Leighton, couldn't go to it. She didn't go to ground, though. She kept her feet, which is the smarter decision, because she wrapped up the Port Melbourne footballer and Stanley, who ended up picking up the football, and will call for a ball up right in front of our broadcast position. So Tanner once again in the ruck against McGrath. The tap goes straight to Lozowski Hay. Gets quick hands out to Bramage. Bramage, Monaghan off the ground. Holly Bailey now can go for a running kick. She switches the ball as a one-on-one -on -one matchup and Lock falls perfectly into her hands. Great positioning by her. She's right in the centre of the ground. Apes to go forward to a one-on-one -on -one contest. It was Cleo Saksha Jones there. Naley Borg tries to paddle it forward with the boot. It'll trickle towards the boundary line. Erin Meads there on the last line of defence for the Seagulls. Gets quick hands off to Sasha Long. Ducks one way, ducks the other, and now kicks it towards the boundary line, but it goes straight to the hands of the borough. So the borough will have a chance to go back inside 50 and straight into the hands of Sarah McNamara, who can go for her second goal of the day. She's about 30 metres out on a slight angle and will aim for a second of the day. Alex Doherty, what did you make of that passage of play? Yeah, that's very good and again, very quick, very direct from Port Melbourne. You can see they're trying to go really quick any time they, they've got the ball inside 50. Maybe Monaghan here just having a spell as well. Very interesting to see her play a little bit more in the midfield today. Yeah, spot on, Alex. So Sarah McNamara comes in for a kick, gets it nicely off the boot. Does it go all the way? It does. Sarah McNamara with her second of the day gets Port Melbourne's fifth goal of the day. They're continuing to roll on here at North Port Oval as the rain teams down. It brings the borough up 
to five or oh, four four sorry four four twenty eight Williamstown one point and we've just played uh, about nine and a half minutes in the second term so good work there by Port Melbourne Sasha Doherty what did you think yeah look I thought it was good I did notice a bit of off the bump uh, around the goal score I'm not sure if you guys did but there are a few uh, seagulls going down a few barrows going down but I um, actually just saw Pip Peshke run off um, I think after that heavy fall she looks like she just needs a rest on the bench with the trainer as the umpire throws the football up in the air to restart play. McGrath wins it down, almost straight down the throat there as Stanley was coming through. Got a hurry, little hand pass out. Bailey over around the football. Bailey went again for a second crack. Snelensk was all over her like a cheap suit. And the umpire says, I'll ask the football back, please. And a reset play between centre and centre half forward for Williamstown. Then to the left of your radio dial or screen if you're watching on the VFLW YouTube stream. Everyone's going to jump on top of the football again. Bramage is working in there hard. Sitting on her backside was Usley, who can't get it out. And the umpire says, we'll reset play again. I love how you make the umpire sound so nice, Pete. I'm just noticing you say the umpire. Oh, the umpire says, I'll get the ball back. We'll have a free kick. <laughs> it sounds very nice. Well, and... I can sound meaner if you'd like <laughs> as he comes in and inserts himself into play. <laughs> no, <laughs> not <muzzle> quite. <laughs> no. Free kick going the way of Williamstown. Quick little hand pass off. Long on the left. That's a nudge and a half every day of the week. Yeah, she played that well. She knew she was going to get a push in the back and just and just really went for it, and it's paid off. It was like a child standing on the edge of the pool and the parent saying, come on, learn how to swim, and then giving them the shove and say, there you go, <laughs> straight the old, in the deep end. The well, old-fashioned way, hey? Straight out the front. It's not Tal bad. Talia Merritt's going in for her first goal of the day. She's straight in front, about 30 metres out, looks nicely off the boot and gets straight through the middle. So the Seagulls are on the board for the first time today. It's 4-4-28 to 1-1-7. A great kick there by Talia Merritt for the Seagulls. She's, she's had some really nice passages of play, uh, Talia Merritt. She's really looked prominent in the air, and, yeah, I think she might have milked it, that free kick for all it was worth, but if it's if it's going to give you the six points, you'd do it every day of yeah, the week. Yeah, if it's there, it's there, and you just take opportunities like that. But, I mean, she had that one-handed mark in the last quarter. I mean, I think she's going to be a real asset for them up forward. So as we have the football back in the middle of the ground, a reset play. We have gone 12 minutes into the second term. 21-point lead to the Borough over the Seagulls. Umpire clears the way and then throws it high in the air. One out, Tanner put it into traffic for Williamson to try and get onto. McGrath comes in with a harsh tackle. The umpire says that is a free kick to the borough. And uh, taking the football there is Abby Tanner. Tanner on the right boot going towards the half forward flank. Straight down the guts of Claire Diet. Diet with the football, 65 metres out from home. Sees Kyes, gets on the left boot, goes towards the hot spot, 25 metres out from goal, came off hands. Williamstown tried to rebound. They were looking for Mal Nickus. Went through the legs there of Williamson, who couldn't pick it up. Ball just got kicked indiscriminately off the ground. It's in the forward pocket. Kyes jumps all over it, tries to keep the football alive here for Williamstown. Harsh tackle comes in. Umpire says it's fair. And no, no, pulled out the free kick. Uh, thought he crossed himself and he said no I'm just pointing in the other direction Emily Harley with a free kick for the borough no nope, and she'll dish it off thanks for making a fool of me and <laughs> instead it's Holly Bailey who will end up with it on a very tight angle some quick thoughts from Sasha Doherty yeah interesting decision there I'm not really sure but I mean let's hope for them it pays off Holly Bailey put it over the goal umpire's hat the Absolutely. flag waves from behind the goals. The crowd of at least 250 to 300 in the grandstand applaud. And Weems um, Port Melbourne extend their lead. They go to 5-4-34. Weemstown 1-1-7 here in the second term. Some thoughts from Alex Doherty. Well, Port Melbourne, all five of their goals have come from stoppages or clearances. They've, they're, really, they're really good at, at making those sort of scoring opportunities happen from the source. And... We, we said it earlier. If they keep that sort of pressure up, this is going to get this is going to get really ugly, actually, for for Williamstown because Williamstown they've had their opportunities, but they just can't really make the most of them. No, I think yeah, the forwards definitely play more of a de defensive forward game, which really pays off for them. So the ball's back in the middle now. It's a couple of players over the footy, and it looks like we'll have a stoppage almost immediately after the throw up. So Holly Bailey there getting her first of the day. She's a former KCVFLW player. 
And also an XMCC utility as well. So she can play everywhere, but she's in the forward line on that occasion. Now the Seagulls will have a chance to go forward. Merritt, the goal kicker, was there. Couldn't quite get her hands onto it. The ball's at ground level. It's dangerous. Usley was able to pick it up and get wrapped up immediately for the Borough. The crowd's calling for ball, but I think she was wrapped up as soon as she did get the footy. So we'll just have a ball up inside the forward 50 there for the Seagulls. And McGrath and Tanner have been competitive in the ruck today. They're in there again doing battle. Monaghan gets the tap down towards her, but it's stopped there at ground level and it will be held up once again. Tripodi is at the bottom of the park. She's in the leadership group this year for the Seagulls. So Tanner and McGrath gets it past both their hands. The ball ends up at ground level again. It's a bit scrappy here in this contest. Not much movement around the footy and the umpire will circle and we'll have our third ball up in about 10 seconds. <laughs> So let's see if we can clear this at 35 metres out from the Williamstown goal. Up we go. McGrath taps it down at the feet. No one's to pick it up. Umpire spotted one too high here and said it'll be a free kick to Port Melbourne and a chance for them to clear out of defence. Here's a little kick across oh. to Monaghan. It was a sitting duck. It got punched away from her. Could have seen a chain of hand passes. Given the don't argue, there was Mel Nickus. Sold wheeling up the creek, but managed to get the kick away. Looking for a key forward. Slipped through her hands. It's chaos at the top of the goal square. Little hand pass going backwards to bite it. Wag Webster! <laughs> Biggest name in women's football, at least by the number of letters. Gabrielle Budenweg Webster kicks Wimstown second of the day. And they tick along now on our scoreboard to two goals, one thirteen. Port Melbourne, 5-4-34. Some thoughts from Sasha Doherty. Yeah, well, that was like a, a bit of a hot potato out there. It was just getting handballed around and around. But it worked for them because they were waiting to find the gap and then just, yeah, straight through the goals. And that, they need to keep doing a bit more of that and backing themselves in that forward line. Also, oh, Alex Stockerty from the A3 podcast. Sort of started from that, with that kick from, from full back. It was a very unnecessary kick to the pocket because there was a couple of uh, Williamstown players that were ready to pounce and really sold uh, Monaghan under, under a lot of trouble. So back in the middle now, McGrath and Tanner do battle in the ruck. Can't quite get it to Monaghan. Whelan gets the quick handball out to Tripodi. Tripodi's got a bit of space to run. Kicks it in the direction of Merritt, but it falls in the hands of Olivia Barden for the Borough. So Borough will go out, go outwards. Gets it into the throat. It looks like of Bailey out there. So we'll look for some options. Claire Dine, in fact, instead. The former Hawk goes straight down the line. It's a good passage of play here for the Borough. Another mark. Whelan's there on the line, and Monaghan's got the ball in her hands. She's right on the true centre wing position. She goes inboard now, tries to get into the corridor. It's a bouncing footy. It falls to the hands of the Seagulls who can get a quick handball chain out. It's still at ground level. A couple of players surrounding the footy. Can't quite pick it up, anyone. Everyone's falling down as the ball gets in the vicinity. It's close to the boundary line. It's going to fiddle over, fiddle over, fiddle over. And the umpire will call the ball up just out, just inside the boundary line instead. So we saw Biden Wegg Webster get that goal. She's a former Collingwood VFLW player and now trying out her trade here for the Seagulls and got one on the board, got their second on the board earlier in this term. So we'll have another ball up and this time it's a lasso rule. So we love that rule here in the VFLW. It makes the play interesting and it would go the way of the borough who can go towards their 50 metre line and hopefully inside the 50 metre line and for a goal. They're six of the day. So they'll kick towards that direction as they usually intend to do. And it's a great mark out there on the lead. Fantastic by the skipper in Mel Kyes. Original kick there by Phoebe Monaghan. Beautifully done. A couple of, well, Kai's an ex-AFLW star and Monaghan a current AFLW star. So a couple of good link-ups there for the Borough and Kai's has it about 45 metres out and a pretty generous angle. So she'll have a nice slow run-up assessor options. Now she gets the kick off the boot, doesn't quite make the distance. It gets tapped over the line. Is anyone there for the Borough to kick it through? Nearly done there by McNamara. She would have got a third of the day. Instead, it goes through for a behind, and that's the Borough's fifth behind of the day. It takes them to 5 5 35. The Seagulls are 2 1 13. We've played just over 18 minutes in this second quarter. And they'll run the ball immediately back into play and go long outside 50. Trying to take it off the set of hands there is Strafford, who got immediately caught and ran into heavy traffic on the wing on the city side of the ground. Pepeski gets involved, the umpire says, going nowhere, I'll call for a ball up. But it wasn't Pepeski, pardon me, that was, uh, looked like diet who jumped in there. Umpire will take the football back. Too many blonde players. <laughs> Indeed. If McGrath brought it down to ground. William, uh, pardon me, William tried to get involved. There's Willen and Williamson, all for Williamstown, just to make some <laughs> yes. tongue twisters. 
Free kick going the way of the Seagulls. Fast. And they go up the line trying to find Talia Merritt. Went through her hands. Ball squeezed out courtesy of Monaghan to work towards the wing on the city side. Now they switch Great back hit. immediately. And managing to take the mark there, Ali McDonald. McDonald goes for a little run. Tries to draw the player. Now gets the hand pass away to Lisa Davey. Davey has a target and finds it on the forward 50. McNamara decides to work it wide -ish towards the pocket. Had to stretch for it in the end. Phoebe Monaghan, who's gone from one wing to the opposite half forward flank. Not bad, Sasha Doherty. Absolutely not. I mean, that was a beautiful take, and I really think she's got a, a really good chance here. She's a beautiful kick, as we saw before when she kicked to Mel Kai. So let's see how she goes. Kicking from 45 metres out, just a metre or two inside the boundary on the siren. It is oh. touched on the line. Oh, I mean, again, she did make that distance. It was a beautiful kick, but, yeah, unfortunately touched on the line, like you said, Pete. 5-6-36, Port Melbourne, Weemstown, 2-1-13 at halftime as the light rain continues to tumble here at Northport Oval. Let's get some thoughts before we go to our halftime break. Let's first of all start with uh, the man from the A3 podcast, which you can find in... Any place you get a good podcast or the dodgy ones too, Alex Doherty. Well, it's, it, the scoreboard says that it's all Port Melbourne's way, but I've really liked how Williamstown have endeavoured themselves at the contest. They've sort of, they've sort of gone pound for pound in their clearances. They've, and but I think the the class that Port Melbourne have shown in the wet at the moment, that last passage of play that led to Monaghan's scoring opportunity, that, that's that sort of that sort of kicking in the middle. That's really frowned upon in wet weather footy. But the way that they're moving the footy right now, that is, it, it's it's. First, it's first grade footy. It is, and like I, I agree with you. The um, the amount of wet weather footy you see, where the ball's dropped constantly. Yes, we're having ball ups, but they're consistently clear with the actual game. They're not ball ups because of mistakes with dropping a footy, and I can't can't um, fault either team for keeping it on their chest and just getting it getting it to their team members. And they're being extremely smart with this wet weather football, which I have to admit is now coming down heavier than it was before. Oh yeah, it's getting heavy. <laughs> That is Sasha Doherty, the goal-kicking power behind the Brunswick <laughs> Renegades oh, in the VAFA. <laughs> Talking about goal-kicking, let's find out who kicked the goals up to half-time with Julia Montesano. Yeah, so a couple of goal-kickers for the Borough. McNamara with two, Saxon Jones, Locke and Bailey with singles. Williamstown got on the board in that quarter. That was through Talia Merritt and Gabrielle Biden, Webb Webster, the long name. We love it. So 2-1-13, Williamstown, 5-6-36, Port Melbourne. Just before we go to the halftime break, just a quick question around the panel. Did it look like a chance that this game was going to blow out? And do you think Weemstown's two goals, as much as the rain's getting heavier, do you think they're still breathing? I do. I believe they are. And I, I noticed it earlier when they did get that second score on the board, they seemed more up and about. Like, they were like, oh, we can actually do this if we put our minds to it. And I think they're going to come out in the second half rejuvenated. They're not going to die wondering, uh, Williamstown. I think they're, as they're, st they're still giving they're still giving it a red hot crack. It's just the their, their biggest problem is that they've recorded more inside fifties. I thought they actually pressed really really well in 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 those in that sixty attacking 60, 70 meters. They, they just they just sort of struggle to just finish it off and and it's not and I think they'll get. They're a chance. There's no doubt they're a chance, but I think a lot has to go right. Yeah, yeah. We can't write it off yet, Pete. You, you can't win your score right now. Yeah, like like you guys said, the scoreboard doesn't really suggest how close the contest is. I mean, the rain keeps any team in it, really. And Williamstown have a bit of a smaller team, so it might work well with the ground balls to see if they can be nimble and pick it up and try and kick it towards their forward 50. Talia Merritt's been great in the forward line. I know she's one of the taller players, but... Amy Whelan's been really impressive in the midfield. I've been really impressed with what she's been able to do. Erin Mead in the back line has been fantastic. So it's not over for the Seagulls. And I don't think they'll be thinking that either in, in the halftime break as Petty cooler delivers her messages. And as Erin Mead said on the media day here at Port Melbourne a few weeks ago, that if they can be a 50-50 record come the halfway mark of the season, that's a win for them because they said that the last six games of the season will be at Weemstown. They'll host a block of home games in a row to finish the season. And just quietly, besides being a little bit humid, it'd be a bit more windy. These are the type of conditions you'd play at Williamstown. So if, oh, they, yeah. could, if they could win in this weather, I'll tell you what, they'd be up and about for the second half of the season. We'll take this opportunity to take a break at halftime. Port Melbourne 5-6-36, Williamstown 2-1-13. We'll be back 
after this break. Hello, I'm Bryony Dawson. Expressions of interest are now being taken for the second round of the 2020-21 Change Our Game Making the Call program. The course is designed to provide aspiring women sports broadcasters with the skills and mentoring to pave their own way into broadcast media. I was one of the lucky 21 women who took part in the first round of the pilot program. The program included the opportunity to hear from well-established media identities, including Kelly Underwood, Andy Ma, Melanie Jones, and my personal favourite, Daisy Pierce. For more information about the program, visit the Change Our Game website. Australia is working hard to ensure we all have access to safe, effective and free COVID-19 vaccines, which will give us the protection to go about our everyday lives. The COVID-19 vaccines are being assessed carefully by independent clinical experts to ensure all potential vaccines meet Australia's high safety and quality standards. After vaccines are approved, they'll be rolled out, going to those most in need of protection first. To keep up to date, visit health.gov.au. Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. There's jumpers, hoodies and tees for you at leaguetees.com.au Leaguetees.com.au is your place for retro footy gear with designs created by local artists that you won't find anywhere else. Plus their unique range of women's footy tees help raise funds for Indigenous literacy programs. Get online and start shopping today. Leaguetees.com.au If you've had something stolen... Or if you've had property damaged, you need the police, not the sirens. If you've lost something or found something valuable... Or if you want to register a party or let us know you're going away on holiday, you need the police, not the sirens. When you need the police but not the sirens, you can now report these incidents online at police.vic.gov.au or call 131444. Authorised by the Victorian Government, Melbourne. Hey, Gary, what time you call this? Yeah, the traffic was really bad. Oh, there's Steve-o. G'day, Steve. Morning. How's your weekend? Same old, same old. What'd you get up to? Not much. Are you okay, mate? Looking out for one another is something we all need to do. So if a mate's struggling, ask, are you okay? Listen, encourage action, and check in again soon. Those four steps could change their life. Find out more at areyouok.org.au. Draft Central is entering a new era, covering all the state leagues from the VFLW, Sample W, Waffle W and Quaffle W, as well as their primary focus, the NAB League Girls. Draft Central has you covered when it comes to all you need to know about the future stars of the AFL women's. Draft Central, brought to you by Rookie Me, is now on YouTube, so be sure to subscribe at Draft Central, as well as on our Facebook, Twitter and Instagram pages at Draft Central Oz. Could you recognise if one of your friends or family was having a stroke? Think fast. F. Face. Check their face. Has their mouth drooped? A. Arms. Can they lift both arms? S. Speech. Is their speech slurred or confused? T. Time. Don't wait. Call triple O now. Think fast. Act fast. A message from the National Stroke Foundation. It's Anna Mears winning gold. Hey, I'm Anna Mears. Winning gold at the Olympics was an incredible feeling. And having my biggest rival, who I'd just beaten, ride up next to me and lift my hand in victory topped off an amazing moment. We'd had our fair share of clashes over the years, but in the end, we both respected each other, and that's what really counts in sport. Be gracious in victory and in defeat. To keep your sport inclusive, safe and fair, go to playbytherules.net.au. Hi, this is Missy Higgins for RAD, recording artists, actors and athletes against drink driving. I see a lot of things at gigs, mostly people having a good time and a few drinks. But what I'd hate to see is someone getting behind the wheel after they'd been drinking. Being even a little bit over the limit makes it too easy to lose control. So if you plan to drink, plan ahead. Arrange a designated driver who won't drink. Remember, music lives and you should too. Hi, Kirk Pengilly from InXS here. And whether it's music, sweet things, puppies, movies, we all love our treats. But our eyes need treating too. 300,000 Australians, including me, are affected by glaucoma. 
Diagnosed early, glaucoma can be managed. Left undiagnosed, it can cause blindness. So treat yourself by treating your eyes to a simple test. Book your test at treatyoureyes.org.au today. Did you know you have superpowers? This March, World's Greatest Shave is back. Will you be a superhero and step up to shave the world from blood cancer? Every day, another 41 Australians are diagnosed with blood cancer. These families need your help. Lose your locks or colour your hair to raise funds for urgently needed support and to accelerate blood cancer research. Your superhero moment awaits. Sign up now at worldsgreatestshave.com or call 1-800-500-OAA to find out more. No business wants to throw money away. But did you know sending resources to landfill can be more expensive than recycling them? Planet Ark's free business recycling service can kickstart your workplace recycling journey, help you find the right recycling solutions and give you a competitive edge. Join the 1 million Australians using business recycling to keep valuable resources in circulation. Visit businessrecycling.com.au. It's just good business. <laughs> They're my grandkids. Gee, they can make some noise. But you know what? It's a beautiful sound because they're alive and having fun. The sound I hate is silence in the pool. When a child drowns, you hear nothing. No splashing, no cries for help. Be vigilant around water. Fence the pool, shut the gate. I teach your kids to swim. It's great. Supervise, watch your mate, and learn how to resuscitate. I'm Laurie Lawrence. Kids alive, do the five. It's WARFradio.com, the VFLW live stream on YouTube. You are listening to the VFLW match of the day. We present Port Melbourne versus Weemstown at halftime. It is Port Melbourne 5 6 36. Port Mel, uh, pardon me, Weemstown 2 1 13. Let's get some around the ground scores. We remind you that Geelong versus the Southern Saints is also a radio game being done online by GoFooty.live. They cover Geelong games. That's GoFooty.live. And that score at the moment is two points the difference. Oh, very close indeed. Have ramifications here for Port Melbourne as well. Port Melbourne and Geelong are kind of the two top sides. And they will meet next week. And we'll tell you about that in a moment's time. Geelong 139 versus the Southern Saints 117. Carlton 2618. Darabin two straight 12. A kick in it there. And uh, no scores at the moment from Casey in North Melbourne. We'll just try and double check on social media what those scores are. But we'll let you know that definitely next week we have locked in 10 a.m. next Saturday at Witten Oval. We'll present Western Bulldogs versus Williamstown. And then uh, GoFooty.Live will have from 4.30 and we'll be taking their coverage on Wharf Radio. Geelong and Port Melbourne down at Deakin University. I got Huge the, game. I got the score update for the um, for the Casey game. Yes. It's... Um, Casey 7 8 50 to Norse 5 behind, so they're running Ouch. riot Ouch. at the moment. Ouch. Mm, that's not a good score. And there'll also be a Sunday game next week to be confirmed, and we'll let you know on social media on Monday or Tuesday uh, what commentators are available and what game we'll do on the uh, Sunday. Uh, both sides are now back out on the ground doing their respective warm ups. And for Sasha Doherty, I, I guess what boxes do Weemstown need to tick? I mean, as we said, they're not out of the game at 23 points of difference and they did work well in that second quarter but what have they got to do to start chipping into Port Melbourne's lead? Yeah look I had a couple of notes that I saw, sort of saw that they were basically I noticed they were letting their players um, basically float around the ball and they weren't really tightening up on their sort of defence and that's all across the board not just in their back line so I think what they need to do is go yeah basically player on player and really really sort of stick to them like glue at this stage, especially in the rain. You just can't afford to let the ball go, you know, a little bit out of reach and then it's a quick pick up and bang, as we saw, quick goals that get on the board and that's why it's 36-13 at the stage. Alex Doherty, your thoughts as well on Weemstown and them trying to chip into this lead because if they can win today, that'd be a massive sculpt to get Port Melbourne 
If they don't, their their season is one and two to start the year. And Port Melbourne at three and zip could be well and truly away. Well, I think the thing that stands out for me with Williamstown is their inside 50 entries. I mean, that... that um that second quarter, they recorded uh, about a seven inside, uh, about eight inside fifty entries for uh, two goals one. So, they, and they barely got inside fifty in that first quarter. So they they just keep chipping away. They if they can if they can get that ball inside fifty early, lock it in um, more often than not. I think they they can they can chip away and they can get back into this contest by three quarter time. Well, I think they're just if they keep looking for merit, she seems to be a great target and it's one of the more reliable ones at the moment. And um, I have noticed that's that's who they're aiming for majority of the time. They just need a couple more players that they can rely on as well to, to keep the ball moving forward, and then yeah, then they can actually crack on and get some get some points on the board. All Melbourne players now going into a huddle before they get out there. They're still doing a warm up at the Fred Cook end of the ground for the uh, Williamstown side. And uh, Julia Montesano, we're keeping about recruiting. We, we know Williamstown is the true standalone side, and obviously they try to hope they get players, anyone that's willing to drive out to the west side of town. For Port Melbourne and their recruiting, of course, they take a handful of players from the Richmond AFLW program. But if they're to get just a 3-0 start, if they're to have a fairly successful year, and successful year is making the finals in their first year in the competition, my goodness what that could do for their recruiting program going forward. Not only that players are attracted to a club that's playing finals football, but also, yes, you can see in the background on our camera, location, location. If you work in the city, you study in the city. <laughs> this team is on the doorstep of the city. Yeah, it's perfect location. You're totally right, Pete. And you're right. I think that, and I think the culture here looks fantastic. Just from, I don't know, I'm not inside the four walls and none of us are, but it looks fantastic from the outside. They just really get around each other when they get a goal. They really get around each other for a good tackle. It seems like a really good culture on field and I think that'll translate to some good recruiting. You're right, Pete. And I think the AFLW players definitely add a lot of experience and tips to the younger players. So I think people will be inclined to come here and maybe get some tips off some players, get a good location and also have a bit of fun with the culture as well. I've been inside the four walls at Weemstown. It smells of Borough Burgers, Carlton <laughs> Draft, and sounds like a lot of expletives. Here's Julia Montesano. <laughs> Away from the expletives, we're back in the middle of the ground now. The Williamstown Seagulls will try and get it forward, but they've picked out a free kick early, the umpires have, so they will try and get the ball out early. It will go in the hands of Biden Webb Webster, the former pie. She's just out inside the centre square. We'll go down the corridor. Doesn't quite hit her intended target, so the ball will roll onto the ground. McGrath's there. She's out of the ruck and into the forward line this quarter, it seems. Gets a quick handball off to Chloe Layton, the former blue. Dribbles it along the boundary line. It'll go towards goal, but it'll trickle out of bounds before it does get there. So a near chance for Williamstown. They get the first forward 50 entry of the third quarter, and we'll have a ball in about 30 metres inside their forward 50. We wait for the ball to be thrown back into play. Heaved back in. Tanner overran it, so did King. Williamstown have the opportunity. Umpire says dispossessed holding the football, and it will be a free kick going Lasoski Hay. Luca Lasoski Hay for Port Melbourne, Richmond AFLW listed footballer. Elects to go for a run to get around Tripodi. Goes along with the kick, was trying to find McDonald, went through a hand, slippery ball in these conditions. City side wing. Ball hit the deck and the umpire says it's going nowhere. We'll call for a ball up and we'll get some thoughts from Alex Doherty. Well, Williamstown have got Williamstown have recorded the first inside 50 entry, but they just sort of let let uh, Port Melbourne dictate that clearance um, just before and not the not the sort sort of start they're looking for. I think they need to yeah, kind of clamp down a bit because now Port Melbourne is starting to run away. So a nice spin move there from Naily Borg in the direction of Pip Peshki. She dropped the mark, so we'll have a boundary throw in just outside the centre square and it, with the umpire coming in 10 metres, a chance for a bit of corridor footy here in these wet conditions. So Abby Tanner, Elizabeth McGrath in the ruck for either team. The ball gets to ground level and the players immediately jumped on there. So we'll have another ball up. It's tight stages here. As you mentioned, Sasha, before half time, the rain has got heavier for sure and the players are definitely feeling it out there. You can see it on the YouTube stream if you're watching at AFL, youtube.com slash AFL Victoria. You can see the absolute heavy conditions here, but Hannah McLaren's going to go for a run now. She doesn't care about the rain. Gets a quick handball off to her fellow Richmond teammate, Phoebe Monaghan. Monaghan goes towards Port Melbourne's forward line. Can't quite get there. Williamstown will now have a chance to advance towards their forward line. It ends up in the centre of the square. It's a ground ball there for Port Melbourne to get. It's in the hands of Barden. Barden gets a quick kick out. McDonald's running onto it for Port Melbourne. The skinny little player. She was, she's gets it on the edge of the centre square. Kicks it towards... Oh, down the line, I should say. Harley's there. She knows we can take she a bigger contested mark, but it's at ground level, so she might struggle here. 
Gets wrapped up immediately in a tackle as she gets the ball. So we'll have a ball up just outside the set of square. Alex Doherty, what are your thoughts so far? Well, Williamstown looked like they were um, employing a, a player behind the footy. And it looks like it's uh, Sasha Long that's sitting there in that defensive 50 all by herself. So they're, they're, trying, they're trying to quell Port Melbourne's um, influence around the clearances. Tripodi gets a hurry kick away out of the pack. It dribbles up the line. Going to be intercepted. Usley swings around, gets on the right boot, goes towards the back of the half forward flank, came off hands, going to ground while trying to get a kick away was Mel Nickers, still in heavy traffic, wet ball on the deck, and the umpire blows the whistle. Uh, and that's the umpire off the ball. He spotted it and he said, that's a free kick going the way of the Seagulls. He was about 50 metres away when he spotted that and came in and said, I saw that clearly. And that free kick going away of Mel Nickers, put it on the right boot, went up the line, through several sets of hands, including King back there. Picking it up, though, for the Borough, going for a little run, McLaren, close to the boundary line, and it is over and out, and it looks like we'll call for a ball in. It won't be the lasso rule. So McLaren, good run and dash off half back so far to start this third term as well. She looks like she's going to try and get going for the Borough early on. Try and get more into the play as it uh, comes back in. Abby Tanner doing the ruck work then. Coming through the long sleeves is Leighton of Williamstown. It got smashed forward for the Borough in the Harley direction. He shoved her opponent away from her. Harley from outside 50. Elect to go for an unusual looking pass. Trying to come out and meet the football there as Megan close towards the uh, back pocket in front of the Sandridge Adventure Centre. Long has the football. Umpire spots a trip and says that will be a free kick going the way of Williamstown. And in the back pocket with the footy, with the kick, is the number three in Suleiman, who goes through several sets of hands trying to find Tripodi. And again, it will hit the deck and everyone will jump on top of the ball. We'll call for a ball up. This gives us a chance to get some thoughts from Sasha Doherty. Yeah, look, I'm not sure what Emily Harley was thinking with that kick. It was uh, free for her to just have a crack at goal and just rely on the other forwards to scoop it up if it missed. But um, look, maybe there's a bit of pressure, and especially with the rain, you just get a little bit more stressed. So a ball up just on the 50-metre line there in the Port Melbourne forward line. And as you said, Sash, it's a difficult start. Not many players knowing how to navigate these conditions, a bit feeling a bit unorthodox, I suppose. And the ball will be wrapped up immediately once again. So Emily Harley, I mentioned she had a special talent last week, Pete. I don't know if you remember what I said last week. So she can touch her wrist on the same hand with her thumb. So if you try to do that, your thumb will pretty much bend backwards. But Emily Harley can do it. So... Special talent, guys. Work on it. <laughs> as well as the puns. I've set you two tasks today. But as I have set you guys some tasks, it's the ball's gone out on the full and Portman will have a chance to attack once again. Can't quite get to Monaghan. There's two seagulls there defending her. Now they'll have a chance to attack the forward line. They do. They'll go. They're just outside the centre square now. Can go forward. Just goes down the line. It's cut off there by Port Melbourne. Port Melbourne will have a chance to go back inside 50. It's a bit of ping pong footy right now. And Sasha Long, as you mentioned, Alex Dockery, that spare on the back line is doing a bit of work there. She tries to go down the line once again, a second disposal in a matter of seconds. So Williamstown will aim to go forward again in these conditions. It, the intended target is laid and it falls over her head. McLaren's there for the borough. She's been good off halfback so far this term. She's going to get brought down in this tackle, but does get a handball quickly away to Olivia Barden. Barden tries to get a handball away, but the ball spills to ground instead. The umpire's circling. The players are circling. And it will be a ball up on the edge of the 50 metre line in Williamstown's in Williamstown's forward line. Oh, a lasso rule, in fact, actually. Good spotting there, Pete. Thank you for the nice signal next to me. We She'll love doing the lasso. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Ding, that's, ding, what, ding. that's what the signal <laughs> looks like. And it's an intercept mark, though, for the Seagulls from that uh, kick in. And uh, going short, Wheel and was trying to find Williamson close towards the boundary line. Bounce off her chest and went over and out. And this will be a throw and a chance to get some thoughts from Alex Doherty. Yeah, well, it, uh, Williamstown is certainly not going to die wondering. I think they, they've really matched Port Melbourne in the clearances this quarter. And um, also, Peter, that, that was a really good lasso. I think the only thing you're missing is the cowboy hat. Thank you very much. Yeah! As in goes Tanner. McGrath <laughs> tries to get a hurried little kick away. Tripodi goes in there, immediately gets besieged upon. And the umpire is going to say, hatching the football. Free kick going the way of the borough. And Mel Kais has got it. She'll go for a run. Dutchy on the left boot, going long and finding McDonald. Has McNamara out in the wing if she can find her quickly enough. McDonald elects to go straight down the line, though. Not the smartest kick in the world. 
and McGrath will take the intercept mark for Williamstown. So McGrath, who's been battling in the ruck most of the day, gets a quick handball to Chloe Layden, the former blue, will kick it towards the forward line. Kayla Stanley's kick smother for the Borough. They'll still have a chance to mop it up. They'll go straight down the line. It's Elizabeth McGrath who's going to get a mark again. It just falls out of her hands. Nayley Borg was her opponent in that instant, so a mismatch there. Borg sockers it off the ground. Harley's running onto the ground ball. Runs past it and can't quite get towards it. Lazowski Hay now kicks up the ground ball. She's nimble at their feet. Williamstown fans are calling for a hold in the ball tackle as Amy Whelan who laid that tackle on Lazowski Hay. The ball will now trickle towards Williamstown's forward line. Oosley's there for the borough who can pick it up cleanly off ground level and kick down the line. She's got no targets, so she just has to kick a floater. It'll go in the hands of Williamstown now. We've picked up the ground ball. There's a run on here. Two Port Moment players on one seagull. The seagull takes the forward. Oh, the seagull kicks the goal. It was Gabrielle Biden where Webster, the former Collingwood player, kicks Williamstown's first of the quarter, her second of the day. And Williamstown, as you said, Alex, they're not going to die wondering in this game. Yeah, that was um, a brilliant piece of play there. And love the run from Biden with Webster. I think she's sort of... She's sort of positioning herself around the ground as that sort of versatile option because I, I saw her a couple of times here in the defensive half that kind of posed as the um, as another loose behind the footy along with um, Sasha Long. So the fact that she can run from point to point, that, that's that's terrific stuff from her. That's terrific progress. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think you just need a couple of more like that and they'll be in contention today. And I mean, we've got a whole other quarter to go, so I don't see it, you know, not being an actual story out of Williamstown, maybe. McGrath versus uh, Williams Wilson out of that contest. While well, the deck Ramage goes in over the top and the umpire says it's going nowhere and will call for a ball up. We're in the third term, nine and a half minutes gone on WARFradio.com and the VFLW YouTube stream. 17-point uh, lead to Port Melbourne at the moment. Coming through is Whelan like a hot knife through butter. Got through all the defenders, then kicked it out into the wing on the Norm Goss stand side of the ground. They try to kick it off the cup, but the coach says, get out of my way! And it worked out, managing to get it across to Bramage. But guess what? It was dropped. It was Bonwick Webster who tried to get the keeper win with a fresh airie. Now going in there is uh, Kais. Got on the left boot, dribbled up the line to Pesky. Pesky drew the play and then went to Harley, but Harley dropped it like it was a hot spud. In goes Harley, gets a hand pass to Bramage. Bramage put it on the right boot. Right vision. There at centre half forward through the hands there of Holly Bailey who couldn't hang on to it. Bailey is met heavily by Mead. Umpire says head high contact. Free kick on the way of Holly Bailey. Had another Port Melbourne player on too if she'd marked that. So that was that was terrific play. Bailey goes short and holy moly, she gives it up. Going through the hand pass backwards, ends up with Barton. Barton goes inside 50. monahan has got space. Monaghan goes to the snap and it will fall short towards the top of the goal square. Jumping to early Cleo Saxon Jones. It went out the back and snuck in for a minor score. Port Melbourne 5 7 37. Weemstown 3 1 19. Pete, you thought you can get away with that pun. I heard it. Holy moly for Holly Bailey. Oh, I don't know. Not the best, not your best work. You can do better, but let's see how we go in this passage of play. Courtney Bramage runs after the ball now. Goes straight past it. Kalia Stanley's got it for Paul Melbourne. Immediately drops the ball. Williamstown plays a calling for holding the ball, and they get it. Elizabeth McGrath's having a great quarter here. Two marks early in the centre square, and now a free kick. Gets the quick hands away. The Seagulls will go down the line now. There's a couple of players waiting in the air. Williamson was down on ground level. Instead of opposite number seven, Oosley gets the kick away. And it's a great mark running back with the flight by the skipper for Port Melbourne, Mel Kyes. So Mel Kyes is just on the centre wing position. She'll go inboard now. There's a couple of Port Melbourne players there. Diet was her intended target. McNamara gets it off the ground level. Goes towards the goal square. Peshke's there. Clear. Saxon Jones is there. Falls straight out of her hands. Peshke gets pushed off the footy. She'll aim to try and tackle her opponent. She couldn't quite get there in time. Erin Mead has a chance to move up for the Seagull. She's being closely followed by Sarah McNamara. And that affects the kick. The ground ball's picked up by Phoebe Monaghan. She'll go back in, inboard once again. And Port Melbourne now outside 50 and can go for their... Sixth goal of the day. That's a tongue twister in itself. Holly Bailey's got the ball off the ground level, gets immediately tackled. The umpire says she was held for too long and she'll get a free kick, a set shot on goal from about 40 metres out. She's straight in front. And immediately they were calling for Stretcher. Having a, some problems there is Bridget Costello. And they're tapping on the back and they're looking at her head and onto her eyes. So... I'm not going to try and diagnose it because I am not an expert. It does look worrying though, Pete, when you kind of say straight away she's oh. got to get off. Oh, it's... hang on. I think her shoulder's popped out. Left shoulder. She's just screaming Ooh. in pain there. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, that's not good at all. Yeah, I've been there. It's not a nice feeling. Uh, the last thing you want to do is just sit there in the field. In a fair bit of pain, Doctor coming out at the moment to meet her. While that happens, let's get some thoughts from Alex Doherty and Sasha Doherty. Um, oh, just ha just trying to have a look at what they're looking at. It might it will be a sh looks like a shoulder, um, sort of. Oh yeah, you, you can, I can see from the binocular she is in a lot of pain. So whether it's a shoulder, I, th I thought I saw a clutch in her leg, but it doesn't look like it's a leg. But um, that's uh, that's that's not what you want to see. I think that's gonna that's gonna really put it put a big dagger in Williamstown's chances. She's yeah. an important player for them as well, for Williamstown. She's um, a former Therry Panola captain, so she's got the leadership, but she was best on ground in a grand final while playing for Therry Panola as well. So an yeah. important player for them, and a shame that she's gone down. We hope we yeah. can get the shoulder popped in, if it is the shoulder yeah. indeed. So, um, yeah. and just to remind everyone, we're not actually looking through the vision for those that are watching the VFLW live stream, so we're not actually looking at that. We're just eyeballing it here yep. from our commentary yep. position. And uh, from what I can see, in extreme pain. And I, I know some people might say, oh, can you look away from it or not? We should point out that the vision here is also the official vision that they look for reports, etc., from from the league. So therefore, obviously, if there's an injury or a serious matter happens, example, fights, their priority is they have to zoom in on that. So um, that's why if you're looking at the distress vision at the moment, that is their job to, to look at that. Um, so if you are a bit squeamish, look away for a moment. But uh, she's in agonising pain. Uh, might take a moment, uh, Julia, to have a look through the goal kickers and then I'll get some around the ground scores. Yeah, absolutely. So for Port Melbourne, they've got a couple on the board. Holly Bailey with a single. Sophie Locke with a goal. Cleo Saxon-Jones in for her first, goal, uh, first game of the year, kicks her first goal of the year for Port Melbourne. Sarah McNamara's got the double. For Williamstown, Talia Merritt's kicked a single and Biden Webb Webster's got two goals. So Williamstown were right back in this contest before the injury. And I wonder, um, Sasha and Alex, what that will do for them in momentum. I guess it's a, it might work in their favour. It might work in Port Melbourne. So what do you think of a stoppage of play? Which teams are going to favour? Yeah, look, I think stoppage of plays, especially this sort of late in a quarter, can be quite um, game-changing sometimes. I think um, it's not usually for the best, um, but we'll see how they go. I mean, what I noticed before was that Williamstown's pressure's improved. Um, the forwards have been stepping up. There's been a um, bit more physicality from them as well, which is showing their confidence that they actually, um, they feel like they can take on the borough and um, push this score up so they can actually be contested against them. I think it's a lot of pressure because they haven't really had that same intensity throughout this game and then now they pick it up and unfortunately you know stoppage of play like this can really change things but look um we'll see how we go and she's coming off at the moment she's on her feet so at least that's it. that's something yeah um just it was a passage of play before like, port melbourne is still trying to look in board and it was a play there with uh, mel kyes that went that went inside 50 and it was a two-on-one in favor of port melbourne and i think they they're, they're looking for those options and it's, it's not like they're they're doing it you know, nine times out of ten, they're looking at for the right at the right times, and if they keep doing that, they they're almost ready to split this game open. I resume play now, and sorry to cut you off, Sasha, but Holly no, no Bailey's way. had a set shot on goal. Doesn't quite make the distance. Naley Borg off the ground level, trickling, trickling, Ooh. trickling towards goal, and it just scrapes through the right hand side for a minus score. So that takes Port Melbourne to five eight thirty eight. Williamstown to three one nineteen. You can hear the applause for yeah, Bridget yeah, Costello, who's in yeah, the hands of yeah. trainers heading off the ground. Might be a broken arm by the look of it. Yeah, it, looks, it does look like an arm. 57 to 12, by the way, in the Casey versus North Melbourne game at the moment. Casey Demons leading there. As Port, as Port Bomber back inside their forward 50 into the goal square. Will Williamstown rush it through and concede? They will. And they move to 5 9 39. That's Port Melbourne, 5 9 39. Williamstown, 3 1 19. The clock did stop during that injury. There's no time on in the VFLW unless there is a serious injury, in which then the umpires will indicate to the timekeepers. Here's the kick long out of defence. Trapodi, oh, good strike grab. Right in front of our broadcast position. Trapodi elects to play on quickly. Gets on the right boot, goes up the centre wing. Nothing on, nothing on, nothing on. Except Hannah McLaren, who will take it away here for the borough. Goes towards the half-forward flank. Went through oh. Edge. oh, crunch. Hitting the ground hard is Naley Borg, who goes, what happened to me? And Strafford's feeling a bit uh, wobbly as well. As yeah. I'm told, the audio might have an issue on YouTube at the moment, so we'll see what that might be. I'll throw away to Julia Montesano as we have a blood rule. Yeah, so Naley Borg going in hard there. She's been impressive in this quarter. She started off well, but obviously a hard hit, so... Yeah, I can see like... stars just floating around. <laughs> yeah. 
Good, so, um, good Sarah, courage there, Absolutely, Julia. absolutely. So Naley Borg will go off, so that means she can't take the free kick, and Sarah McNamara will take the kick in her play. It's not a bad, not a bad play to take the kick, considering she has got two goals already today. So she's right on the edge of the 50-metre line, and she's got Elizabeth McGraw on the mark, so she'll have to kick it long and high to get over her. And as we wait for Stanley to come back on to replace Borg, McNamara now will have a chance to kick inside 50. She goes top of the square instead, the safe option. Locks flies for a mark, doesn't quite get in the hands of her. Seagulls now will have a chance to rebound. Player immediately drops it. Well, umpire doesn't call dropping the ball. So instead, it'll be out towards in the defensive 50 for Williamstown, but wrapped up immediately in a tackle. So we'll have a ball up. We're about 30 metres out inside the forward 50 there. So we'll throw up now. The umpire will throw the ball up, I should say. Clear Saxon Jones in the ruck, trying to grab it down and kick a goal. Can't quite do it in that instance. So we'll go again. So a bit of stop-start footy, a bit of injuries, as we said. Bridget Costello looks like she's coming with a suspected broken arm. Our thoughts are with her. And Naley Ball just got crushed in a contest. She's gone off for a bit of a check as well. So the ball's still bubbling in Port Melbourne's forward 50. Lazowski Hayes there trying to chase the ground level ball. Now Williamstown will try to get it out through Mel Nickus. There's only Port Melbourne players there on that wall. Hannah McLaren gets a handball out wide to Ali McDonald. McDonald kicks the ground ball off the ground. Can't quite get to her intended target. Gets it back for her troubles. Pipeski's right on the edge of the 50 metre line. Goes for a centering ball. There's no one but Williamstown players there. Can't reach any player. So we'll have to go in and get it is Whelan. Whelan's immediately jumped on and we'll have a ball up just inside 50 uh, for Port Melbourne. You're on WARFradio.com. If you listen to us on the radio stream, apologies, we're having problems with the YouTube stream. You have the vision, but not the commentary. But if you try and stream both at the same time, you can hear on WARFradio.com. Going in there is Bramage, who can't get the football out. The umpire blows the whistle and will call for a ball up. We'll restart again. Willem picks herself up the, off the deck. Saxon Jones gives the ball back. The umpire will do the ruck whip. It'll be beaten out on this occasion. Trying to come through there was Adams for Port Melbourne. She's still hustling on the outside of the pack along with Zoe Garth. Taken away by McNamara. Put her on the right boot. Centres the football. Little punch from behind. Sees the ball go to ground. Couldn't pick up the football there. It was Pip Pesky who's lurking around. Diet's going in for it. Sliding there is Locke. Locke is on the bottom of it all. And the umpire says, I'll take the football back. And we'll get some thoughts from Sasha Doherty. Yeah, what an interesting quarter. It's been a rough and tumble. The Both teams just going uh, head to head, literally. Um, but yeah, good contest still. And I think, you know, Williamstown still have a chance. As Harley is over the top of the football, she gets wrapped up from behind by Baxter. Call for a ball up. And I think it's safe to say since that injury uh, to um, Costello, it's really sucked the life out of the game. Yeah, it has. I think it's just rattled. Yeah, so as you can see, the players are a bit of tight, bit tired bodies out there. Tripodi gets immediately wrapped up in a tackle after that ball up. So we'll have another ball up instead to inside Port Melbourne's forward 50. And like you said, Pete, the energy has gone down a bit, but Port Melbourne still hold an assertive lead. It's 20 points here at Northport Oval. So we'll have another ball up. Cleo Saxon Jones in the ruck for Port Melbourne this time. McNamara is chasing after the footy. She's followed closely by Amy Whelan. She get, gets held without it, but doesn't quite get called. Emily Harley's knocked off the ball. She's down and out. And the umpire will call for a ball up. So Harley was able to get back up. And there's a lot of physicality in this fourth quarter. A lot of players are turning it on. So we'll have a ball up just on the 50 metre line. Abby Tanner up in the ruck this time. Gets the tap towards McNamara, can't quite get it forward. It has to go back to go forward instead, and the ball will trickle over the boundary line. So it'll be a lasso rule, and it will go the way of the borough. It's in Hannah McLaren's hand. She goes for a run immediately. Can't quite get to her intended target. Fell through the hands of Tripodi. The ball now spills at ground level just in front of the Williamstown bench, and the Port Melbourne bench for that matter as well. And we'll have a ball up just in between both benches. So a bit of a stall here in play. But the umpire gets ready to go again. Chipotle's in the middle. Tanner and McGrath contest in the ruck. Bromage is there for Port Melbourne. Goes in the hands of Kai. McNamara, clean pick up off ground level. These conditions was fantastic. Sophie Locke with the contest and Ma was fantastic. Back with the flight. She says, I'll take a set shot. Count me in, umpire. I'm 40 metres out directly in front. She plucked that out of nowhere. Absolutely love that courage going back with the flight by Sophie Locke. I think McNamara's had, a, had herself a, a couple of good moments here in the last five minutes. So Sophie Locke runs in for what will be her second goal of the day. Gets it nicely off the boot. Is it accurate? Goal umpire doesn't have to move. It is accurate. It's a second goal for Sophie Locke. It's a seventh goal for Port Melbourne. 
And the lead is now trickling away in this fourth quarter. It leaves the Seagulls pretty much out of it. It's 6.945 to 3.119. Let's get some thoughts from Alex Doherty. Yeah, well, that started from the, that started with that clearance, and um, that was terrific from McNamara. Just sort of read, just sort of read the um, the scrap out of the out of the back of the stoppage, and that was ter that was a terrific grab from um, uh, Sophie Lock. Sophie Lock. Absolutely, it was a terrific grab. Well done on picking that up, Alex. It was. She's been having a good game. She's been in good form. Port Melbourne might be up high in their best and fairest. And I'll ask the question to Sasha Doherty for Sophie Lock. This is the second game you've seen her. Her draft chances. <laughs> Yeah, I I really do think she'd be an asset to any uh, club on the AFLW um, lists. But um, yeah, I think she's phenomenal, and especially in the the diverse she can be a on the baller or she can be a forward, as we've seen. And yeah, anyone that can mark in this wet weather, I'd love to have on a team like that. Ball's moved on for Weemstown. It's snuck inside their forward fifty, trying to pick it up. There is Mel Nickus umpire blows the whistle and says, "I'll ask for the football back and call for a ball up." Six nine forty five Port Melbourne, Weemstown three one nineteen. <laughs> as the three-quarter time siren sounds on our VFLW Match of the Day on WARFradio.com. The Borough lead by 26 points and are 20 minutes away from claiming first blood against Weemstown in this rivalry in the VFLW. Time to get some thoughts on that uh, third quarter performance. We first of all go to the person who's also behind the Mungrel Punt website. You'll read a little bit about what he's written. Alex Doherty. Well, it was it was sort of 50-50 football until that injury to um, Bridget Costello. And then it's sort of... You, you see that a lot in any form of local footy. Whenever a player goes down in, in serious pain, it sort, it sort of takes the wind, wind out of your sails. I've, I've been there and I've done that. I've, seen, I've, I've played in teams that have... That have just sucked the life out of you when some when an injury to any teammate happens, and Port Melbourne's pressure in, as well, uh, particularly in that forward half, it was sort of they sort of reverted back to how they sort of set up in that first quarter, sort of sort of playing a couple behind the footy, and their forward pressure as well. It's just they they've la they laid a few tackles in, inside 50 in that in that third quarter. They've they've set themselves up for for a good win here. Let's also get some thoughts on youth girls footy coach Sasha Doherty. Yeah, look, uh, one thing I want to point out is um, just Saxon Jones and her placement on field. She really um, sits quite quite deep in the forward line, um, pretty much on the line sometimes, and then gives herself a, quite a heavy lead. But it actually works for her, and it gives her a lot of um, different, diverse sort of ways of running. And her teammates just seem to know where to find her at, at certain times. And then, you know, if she doesn't get it, then there's a sh small crummer that will. And it just seems to be, you know, a really good um, investment having her on their team. Let's get some goal kickers at three-quarter time from Julia Montesano. Yeah, so in that quarter, Sophie Locke got on the board for Port Melbourne and Williamstown's goal came from Gabrielle Bynum Webb. -Web. So that was her second of the day. Talia Merritt's got the other for Williamstown. For Port Melbourne, Sophie Locke has two, as I just mentioned, and so does Sarah McNamara. Cleo Saxon-Jones and Holly Bailey with the singles. We'll take an opportunity to take a break at three-quarter time. Port Melbourne, 6.945, Williamstown, 3.119. Draft Central is entering a new era covering all the state leagues from the VFLW, Sample W, Waffle W and Quaffle W, as well as their primary focus, the NAB League Girls, Draft Central has you covered when it comes to all you need to know about the future stars of the AFL women's. Draft Central, brought to you by Rookie Me, is now on YouTube, so be sure to subscribe at Draft Central, as well as on our Facebook, Twitter and Instagram pages at Draft Central Oz. Did you know you have superpowers? This March, World's Greatest Shave is back. Will you be a superhero and step up to shave the world from blood cancer? Every day, another 41 Australians are diagnosed with blood cancer. These families need your help. Lose your locks or colour your hair to raise funds for urgently needed support and to accelerate blood cancer research. Your superhero moment awaits. Sign up now at worldsgreatestshave.com or call 1-800-500-0888 to find out more. Hello, I'm Bryony Dawson. Expressions of interest are now being taken for the second round of the 2020-21 Change Our Game Making the Call program. The course is designed to provide aspiring women sports broadcasters with the skills and mentoring to pave their own way into broadcast media. I was one of the lucky 21 women who took part in the first round of the pilot program. The program included the opportunity to hear from well-established media identities, including Kelly Underwood, Andy Marr, Melanie Jones, and my personal favourite, Daisy Pearce. 
For more information about the program, visit the Change Our Game website. Australia is working hard to ensure we all have access to safe, effective and free COVID-19 vaccines, which will give us the protection to go about our everyday lives. The COVID-19 vaccines are being assessed carefully by independent clinical experts to ensure all potential vaccines meet Australia's high safety and quality standards. After vaccines are approved, they'll be rolled out, going to those most in need of protection first. To keep up to date, visit health.gov.au. Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. Here on WARFradio.com, this is the VFL Women's Match of the Day. We're at the moment, it's Port Melbourne 6-9-45, leading Weemstown 3-1-19. Rain seeming down here at Northport Oval. I'll have for you shortly some around-the-ground scores. But to get you underway for the final quarter, here is Julia Montesano. Thanks, Pete. So, as you said, fourth quarter, 6-9-45. Port Melbourne leading Williamstown, 3-1-19. The umpire throws the ball up. It's Abby Tanner, Elizabeth McGrath wants to get in the ruck. McGrath tries to get the tap towards her forward line and can't quite get through. So we'll have the ball up almost immediately straight away. The rain is still teeming down. So we'll go once again in the ruck. Williamstown now will get a clearance through Tripodi. Tripodi is a nice lead-out kick. So I think it was Merritt, the goal kicker from before, uh, from earlier in the game with the bright, bright pink boots. She's outside 50. She goes towards the goal square, but doesn't quite get her intended target. And it goes straight down the throat of Port Melbourne through Phoebe Monaghan. So Monaghan will get a high kick outside 50 now to try and get out of trouble for the borough. It's a ball, ground ball there, but Williamstown trying it back inside 50 now. It'll trickle over the boundary line and we'll have a throw in inside Williamstown forward 50. So once again, an early, early forward 50 entry for the Seagulls, but we'll see if they can turn it into a goal. Pete, any around the, score, around the ground scores for us? Yes, we do. The GoFooty.live game, which they're covering at the moment, down Deakin University, Geelong 1-4-10, Southern Saints 1-2-8. Ooh, wow, very close indeed. So Geelong will obviously need to get a win to try and keep a contention with Port Melbourne, but... Back on the ground, there's been a free kick, and it's a high free kick. It looked like it'll go the way of Megan Williamson there for uh, Williamstown. Quickly in the other game, Carlton 3-9-27, Darabin 3 straight 18. Very close games around the grounds, Pete. Looking good. So Williamson will try and kick towards her intended target. She couldn't quite get there. It was Snellick she was after. The ball falls to ground level now. Barton's there for Port Melbourne. Lays a tackle immediately on her opponent, and the ball up will once again be in the hands of the umpire. And we're about 30 metres out in the Seagulls forward 50. Umpire asks for the rucks to elect. And we'll have it thrown up once again. Close range here for the Seagulls to get their fourth of the day. Can't quite get towards the hands of Merritt. She's tackled immediately as she does get it. The Borough try and get it outside forward 50. And McLaren's hit hard as she tries to pick up the ground ball. She's down. And she'll be able to get up here and contest for the ball up. So a reset play with McGrath putting the hand up, nominating for the ruck along with Abby Tanner. McGrath tries to put it out the back to Leighton, immediately wrapped up by Kyes. Umpire blows the whistle for another ball up. Some thoughts from Sasha Dawity. Yes, I think we're going to see a fair bit of uh, ball ups um, in this last quarter. The rain's just starting to make the ground soggy. The ball's heavy, the legs are heavy, but uh, the rucks are doing the best they can at the moment. And it, I think the commended effort, amazing work. Tripodi tried to get it out. It was kicked through the legs there of Leighton. The ball went over the boundary line and out of bounds. Seen over by Emma Harley. 45 plays, 19 here. One-sided game with Casey easily smashing the Kangaroos and the game out there at Casey Fields, which just turns on its head the results that we've seen so far in the VFLW. Anyone can beat anybody at the moment. But coming it out of the pack is Whelan, who kicks it towards the top of the goal square. Sliding into it is Lisa Davey. Couldn't quite trap it. Hurry little kick off the ground by Muller. Just ricocheted back from whence it came. Guys went charging through. Couldn't quite get the football out. Now a hurry kick for the Borough. Uh-oh. Found Williamson. Williamson goes to the top of the goal square. Nobody home. And Except for McLaren. <laughs> indeed. And it will be a free kick going the way, of, oh, pardon me, a mark and a clearance for the Port Borough. So Hannah McLaren now, who's been a rock off that back line today. She tries to kick it outside, fifth, outside of the defensive 50 to try and get out of danger for Port Melbourne. There's a player running onto it in McNamara. It goes straight to Williamstown, who's setting up a nice wall inside 50. Got tackled immediately when she had it was Donnell. Now it goes outside here for the Borough for, to get a chance to go forward. Pip Peschke gets a nice ground ball pick up. Immediately tackled as she do, did pick it up though. 
Ball looking through is Abitana. A lot of, you can hear around us, everyone's calling for ball. A lot of good tackles to start off this fourth quarter. Monaghan have spilled out of her hairs. Chloe Layden tried to get it forward for another rebound entry. Mel Kai is someone, a good shepherd there to try and let, announce, look, allow her to get the ball and it took it over the boundary line. So a hot piece of contest there. And we'll have a throw in just outside 50 for the Seagulls. Whelan's in the midfield on Bramage. So is Kai's, McNamara and Oosley. Abby Tanner's the ruck, so she'll try and get a tap down. Umpire's picked out a free kick straight away, and it will go the way of Abby Tanner, who's been pretty solid in the ruck today, it must be said. Gets a quick handball off to the running Monaghan on the wing. Monaghan goes down the line. There's a couple of players there. It goes over all of their heads. Emily Harley's chasing onto it, but it will be Erin Mead who gets there first for the Seagulls. Erin Mead ducks one way, ducks the other. Goes down the line now to Tripodi. She's met by... Monaghan tries to get the ball. Both her and Kai's fall down as they approach the mark. Whelan tackled immediately. She tried to get the handball off the Tripodi. The ball's at ground level now. All the players jump onto it. We're on the centre wing position. The umpire's circling. We'll call the ball up. Sasha Doherty, any thoughts from you? Yeah, look, I was just having this thought that uh, you wouldn't want the footy in anyone else's hands. The safe hands, Monaghan, I think we should start calling her. I like that. It rings off the tongue very well. Mel Kai's kicks it forward now for the Borough. It goes into the hands of the Seagulls instead. Ducking one way and the other and kicking it down the line. Goes in the direction of Oosley for Port Melbourne. It goes in the hands of Barden now. He's been pretty good up halfback, it must be said. Pip Peshke, the ball fell out of her hands. Williamson was able to pick it up and get a quick handball out. Barden's there once again and so is Monaghan. There's a couple of players there for the Seagulls too. Tripodi's contesting it. So too is Zoe Garth as well with the Platts. So players fall onto the ball now. We're on the centre wing position once again. And Monaghan's been everywhere like you mentioned, Sasha. So... Very good play by her. Yeah, her impact in the last half of this game has been um, incredibly important for the Borough. Tanner knocks the football down, trying to get the clearing kick as Garth, but immediately got knocked off the football. Ramage wanted to go in. Phoebe Monaghan fighting hard for it. Umpire is circling, sees it pop out, says play on. Right goes in a lay attack off of Williamstown. Kicked off the carpet there by Mal Kies. Foot race on in the middle of the ground now. Which way will it bounce? Not kindly for Tendall, who had to go back and get it to Solomon. Solomon quickly put it on the right boot, going up the line. Mark nearly taken there to lock. Will it be paid? It will be paid. And that going the way of the borough. We'll get some thoughts quickly from Alex Doherty. That was gutsy courage there from uh, Locke. I, I've really lo liked her game. And I, I, you, you mentioned draft stock before. I, I, I would definitely love to see her on, on an AFLW list in the next year or two. I, I think Williamstown sort of... They, they sort of controlled those, fir those first five minutes. They're sort of trying to trying to lock it in, trying to get a scoring opportunity. It hasn't worked out. It's probably been the story of their uh, day, to be honest. McDonald then got it across, got it back to Monaghan, who pumped it inside 50. It was going to be trapped by Williamson along the ground. And the umpire says, I oh, will call for a ball up and reset play 35 metres out from goal, attacking the Williamstown road end. So you're right, Pete. We're in the Williamstown road end. And I'm just noticing on the boundary line, Ailey Bork, who had a heavy collision in that third quarter, has got some tape on her face now. So a bit of physicality coming into the game in these conditions. And we'll have another ball up inside the forward 50 there for the Seagulls. The umpire asks for some room, throws the ball up. Good contest in the ruck. The ball goes to ground. Players jump onto it. It's not going to get out. It does now. Erin Mead's there for Williamstown. Tripodi now can get the quick hands out but it falls to ground level. A player there has been hit for the borough. It looks like Sophie Locke once again. And a couple of players, it looks like, are down. Bramage, Locke, Bailey, all copped a hit in that contest there, and the umpire is still circling and will finally ball it up. A bit of heavy contest, and like I said, the physicality is increasing in this one. So we'll have a ball up in the same spot as we had. Took a long time to throw it up indeed, but does get the ball to the ground now. Ball up once again. So a bit of stop-start footy here. Alex Doherty, what do you make of it? Well, it looks like um, it's it's going into... Momentum's coming back into Port's favour here. They're just locking the ball inside 50, and there's no real easy way for Williamstown to get it out. Absolutely. So the umpire's finally picked... Well, not finally, but picked out a free kick. So we'll see if we can get a, passage, a clean passage of play here. Garth has it for Williamstown. We'll get the quick handball out to Tripodi. Tripodi will go down the line. And it'll be on, out on the full. So a chance now for Port Melbourne to rebound. So a bit of sloppy footy here in this fourth quarter, as you would expect. There's tired bodies. There's a Williamstown or a player down, obviously, with that nasty injury to Bridget Costello. We hope she's OK. But now Borough will have a chance to go back inside their forward 50. So they will, but it falls into the hands instead of Donnell. 
off her hands, goes outside the boundary line and will have a throw in. So stop start footy, physical footy, tired bodies. I think that's a pretty much the summary of the fourth quarter so far. Here's Peter Holden to take you through the next play. As we wait for the ball to be thrown back into play, spinning, spinning back in. King going to do the ruck work on this occasion for Williamstown. Put it down the throat of a Port Melbourne opponent, got immediately wrapped up, and the umpire said there's no proper opportunity, and Emily Harley, and we'll restart play again. Cleo Saxon-Jones doing the rucking now for Port Melbourne. Straight into heavy traffic. Tripodi tries to lay a tackle on Bramage, who may have dropped the football. The umpire missed it. As the ball just moves on rugby mall style and going to reset play again. We'll get some thoughts from Sasha Doherty. Yeah, it's a tough game out there at the moment. Fourth quarter, um, rain coming down. They're just not moving the ball in any other direction. It's sticking into that pocket and someone needs to do something soon. As it's all wrapped up, I think it's Pip Peschke, I think, on the bottom of that mess. We'll restart play 45 metres out from the Port Melbourne goal. They're edging closer and closer to victory as we hit the halfway mark of this final quarter. Play is restarted. Again, rolling mall. Lizoski Hay on the outside of the pack. Umpires pulled out a free kick and said it's a holding infringement. It's going the way of Ella Baxter. Baxter with the football inside her defensive 50. Alex to go to the city side of the ground looking for Leighton, but the ball bounced away from her and went out of bounds for a lasso rule. And a free kick going the way of Pip Pesky, who says, go long, go long. We absolutely love that, Pip Pesky. We will go long indeed. She directed her players to get down there and help her out, but there wasn't anyone there. So, of course, it landed inside 50. Even though no one did touch it, it will be a throw-in. So, a handy throw-in here. We'll see if Port Melbourne can break away and get their seventh goal of the day. They're leading Williamstown 45-19 to 19 late in this fourth quarter. The umpire will have a chance to throw it in now. Tanner once again contesting the ruck for Port Melbourne. They go towards the forward line. Mel Kai tried to pick it up. On the second occasion, she did. Spun, kicked towards the goals, but instead it went out of bounds. So we'll have another throw in here for Port Melbourne. And the crowd are willing their, their home side on. It's Even though it's a wet and windy day, it's been a great crowd. And here in this stand, the Norm Goss stand, it's been fantastic to see. So another throw in here for the Borough. Naley Borg's back on the ground after that heavy hit in the third quarter. We'll try and get her hands on the ball in this contest. Couldn't quite do so. Ramaj tackled her opponent without the footy. The umpire didn't see it, so we'll call play on. The ball's trickling towards the boundary line. It will go, eventually go out after Harley was tackled immediately with it. So another one I would have I thought as well, Emily Harley's been a bit quiet to start the second half. I guess the conditions have been a bit... Um, a bit heavier. Sash, what have you made of her so far? Yeah, you're right. I um, haven't seen much happening since, um, you know, yeah, she was very dominant in the first half, second half, not so much. And I'm wondering, yeah, if that stop of play maybe had something to do with it. Um, also, just, yeah, it's not moving very, very cleanly at the moment in any in direction and it's just stuck. I've, I've seen a couple of instances where, particularly during stoppages, about 30, 40 metres off the play, she's getting she's getting double teamed a, a couple of times, and she looked she looked a little frustrated at stages, yep. given given a, given a couple of pushes and shoves uh, along the way. So yeah, a bit quiet. You, you expect that from your key forwards in in um, in wet weather footy though. Whelan is immediately tackled for Weemstown, brought to ground, and will call for another ball up 49 metres out from the Port Melbourne goal. Uh, 12 minutes gone here in this final term. McGrath over the top. Not close towards the boundary line. Chasing after the football over and out is Solomon. And uh, we'll have the ball thrown back into play. The rain continues to team down. You wonder if for any debutante victors, if a Gatorade shower is worth it when the <laughs> rain's coming down or does it just defeat the point as the ball is thrown back in. Going in over the top and maybe getting high is Lisa Davey. The umpire agrees and says that will be a free kick for Port Melbourne on the wing on the city side of the ground. They elect to go short. Not a great kick for Pesky. Lisa, some work to do. Standing start with an opponent coming at her. Kicks long up the line. Whoops. Went through the hands there of Sasha Long. Had support, though, from Williamson, who dances around very close to the boundary line. Doesn't go out. It does now because it just went outside the 50-metre arc. That's where you get penalised. Lasso rule. Free kick to Port Melbourne. Yeah, just outside the 50-metre line. A bit unlucky there for the Seagulls, but either way, a chance for Port Melbourne to counter here and try and get the ball towards their forward 50. But instead, it's Williamson going back courageously to get a mark in def deep in defensive 50. She's been really impressive today for the Seagulls. The former Bendigo Pioneers captain goes down the line looking for a tall target. She can't quite find the hands of her teammate. The 
ball spills to ground level. Now there's a couple of players wrapped around it and the umpire will call for a ball up just on the boundary line there. So, and I guess Alex and Sash, well, any of you want to answer it, I guess how have you kind of seen Megan Williamson's game? I think she's been really good. I'm a big fan of Megan Williamson. I think she, again, she stood up really, really well today. And um, I, I, if, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think she won their BNF last year. Uh, 2019. 2019, yeah, sorry. she did. That's totally right. Good work by you, Alex. So, yeah, <laughs> she's the reigning best and fairest technically, and she's doing really well today in these conditions. So the Seagulls will try and get it forward now, but instead it goes over the boundary line. So the boundary pies had a lot of work to do in this quarter, and... Being a former boundary umpire, it is hard to throw the ball in in these conditions as well. So we feel for the players. We also feel for the umpires, I suppose, as well. <laughs> as the ball is thrown back into play, McGrath, uh, pardon me, yeah, that is McGrath, knocked it over the back of her head. The umpire had blown the whistle uh, that was off the ball and noticed something and said that free kick should go to Elizabeth Wilson for the borough. Wilson on centre wing, city side of the ground. Goes long on the right boot, goes inside 50, doesn't hit any targets. Ramage is there on ground level, working in hard, dispossessed her opponent of the football. Nailey Borgwin in there as well, can't get it out. Everyone's jumping on, a few people are well, hailing cabs as well. And the umpire plans plenty of time circling and eventually blows the whistle and calls for a ball up. So far, we have gone 15 minutes into this final quarter, 45 plays, 19, favouring Port Melbourne's way. Going in there, Bramage can't get it out. Also lurking around there is Mel Nickus. Squeezed out Kais. Still on the deck. Wet footy. Going in and being brave to pick it up and dance around and say thank you very much is Usli who tried to pump it inside 50. Came off hands, went back and got it again with a hurry kick around the corner. McNamara, no one home. Easy mark there for the Towners. And they'll clear it out of the fence with a long kick up the line towards the halfback flank on the broadcast side of the ground. Immediately hit the deck, watching on with Strafford, and the umpire says, I'll ask for the footy back. Let's get some thoughts from Sasha Doherty. I'm just glad they've cleared it out of that side of the ground to our side. Um, but in general, yeah, it looks like it's, um, it's not going to happen for Williamstown, but they've just got to battle on. Just keep going for the next few minutes, and then, yeah, just get over the line and, you know, think about next round. I think keeping Port Melbourne's scores will be a massive win for them. Both sides so far are scores, but if Williams Town can get on the board and keep Port Melbourne's scores, that's a big win for them. So it's just outside the bar is forward 50, so they'll have a bit of work to do here to try and keep them scoreless. Wilson's in the ruck this time for a chance. Pip Peschke was their intended target, couldn't quite get to her. There's a couple of bor Borough players running onto it. Nayli Borg will get to the ground ball first, runs straight past her. Barton's there to back her up, gives her, a, gives her back the ball to get to make up over for a mess. Belinda Oosley now in the centre of the ground, kicks it towards forward 50. The ball goes past her intended target. Peschke's there to wrap up her opponent immediately. Can't quite get the intended result she wanted. Williamstown player down behind the footy. We'll have a check on that in a second. For now, they're going to go forward once again. And it's a nice run and carry through the centre of the ground. A bounce in these conditions doesn't favour any player, though. Biden Wegg webster was the one who took the bounce. Have to go up and mop up her own mess. Lisa Davies in there for Port Melbourne to try and get it back out the other way. Players jumping on the ball everywhere. I can't, I can't see the number, but the, uh, the trainer's grabbing her ankle. I think it's Tripodi. Oh, that's not good. Tripodi's a... Vital player for Williamstown and their leadership group this year has been brilliant in the midfield, not only in today's game, but for the year. So we hope she's OK. But for now, the play is advancing forward. It goes inside the Burroughs forward 50. Chloe Layden was the intended target. Instead, it falls into the hands of Pip Peschke. Peschke kicks it outwards. Scarlett Donnell's going to run onto it. She's the first oh. brother's, brother's daughter pick here in the Williamstown lineup. She kicks inside 50 now. Chloe Layden there once again, the former blue. Borough now. We'll have a chance to try and mop it up. Lisa Davies being pretty impressive in these past in this passage of play. She gets it off to Mel Kyes. Off to Diet. Now Diet will kick outside, but it trans lands straight to the hands of Williamstown there. The player that was actually down was uh, Whelan. Seemed to be cramping up. Finally got up when the trainers both got to her and said, yeah, I'm fine, and ran off. <laughs> That's classic Wheels. I went to school with Wheels, so she's an absolute legend and she's playing really well today. Once again, though, tries to get it towards forward 50, does it to the Seagulls, but instead it falls to the hands of Oosley, who I think has been really impressive as well. She's probably one of the best for the borough in these wet conditions. But as soon as I said oh. it, I nearly put the moz on her. She kicks it straight into the hands of Gabrielle Bynum, where Webster, who dropped the mark, aimed for a third goal of the day. She'll run back onto it. Tripodi's back up. Oh, Tripodi's up. Oh. Bynum, where Webster's tackled immediately, and it was definitely a high tackle. So 
After dropping that mark there, she'll get a chance to have a set shot on goal. She's about 40 metres out straight in front, and she can go for a third goal of the day. She's been pretty impressive today, Alex Doherty. Yeah, I've really liked the way she's gone about her footy today. It just attacks the contest, and look, we, we've said it before, that these conditions don't suit a, a key forward as much as it does a, a smaller bodied player, but the way she attacks the contest and the way she sort of brought herself in the air, it's been really fun to watch. As we mentioned, it'd be great if the Seagulls, for the Seagulls if they can keep Port Melbourne scoreless. It gets nicely off the boot by Biden Webb, Webster. So it doesn't quite get the distance. The accuracy was great, but Monaghan steaming out of that goal square, kicks it straight towards the direction of Suleiman, falls out of her hands. That wet ball is doing the trick, playing tricks on us once again. Peshki's there for Port Melbourne to try and mop it up and try and get it back inside 50 for her team. Can't quite get... Can't quite do so. So it falls back into the hands of the Seagull. The umpires... Seagulls? The umpires picked out a free kick now. And the borough will have a chance to get back to their half of the ground through Emily Harley, who we mentioned was a bit quiet. Once again, like Alex mentioned, not a game for key forwards, but she'll have a go here. A nice kick in board, it must be said. A couple of players are there for Port Melbourne to run onto it. Sophie Locke was one of them. So was Ali McDonald. McDonald tackled as she kicked the footy. Umpire picks out a free kick. It's a dangerous tackle from the umpire off the ball. So Ali McDonald will get a free kick and will get a chance to go again. So the ball gets thrown to her. She's a former... Oh, there's the siren gone. Support so Melbourne. They keep on keeping on in this VFLW season. It's an amazing win today by them. It's a 6-9-49... Oh, 6 9 45, sorry, to 3-1-19 Williamstown here at North Port Oval. A great display by the Borough, complemented by their goal kickers, McNamara with two, Sophie Locke with two, Cleo Saxon-Jones and Holly Bailey. Meanwhile, for, for the Seagulls, Bynum Webster got two, Talia Merritt with one. So another great win for the Borough. They look like they're, gonna, they're an early chance of premiership favourites here, Alex Stockney and Sasha Doherty. Yeah, absolutely. Like, what an outstanding statement to make in the first three games of football, you know? Not only being historical, but, yeah, just incredibly um, talented players out there and the football that they're playing is just um, really on point at the moment. Yeah, we, we talked about, uh, Peter, we talked about Collingwood being establishing, establishing themselves as premiership contenders last night. I think Port Melbourne are definitely in this race as well. I think the way they sort of... The way they sort of manage to score, create scoring opportunities off stoppage work, centre clearances, that's that's crucial in any form of football. And I think the way that Port have, have certainly worked themselves around the coalface today, I think they, they're, they're almost as good as anybody. And I, I think you've got to give a bit of credit to Williamstown as well. I think you, you could have... There were so many instances throughout the day that they could have put their head down and say, all right, let's go let's go to next week. But that even that last quarter, they just, they just stopped. They just continued to press and they pressed and they just and they stopped that bleeding really really well I thought